is the Glass Cannon Network. I gotta admit, it's a, it's a little weird coming here. We uh, don't normally perform in such stuffy, conservative towns like this. <laughs> you know how we'll to change our comedy for the night. <laughs> what a cool-ass venue, huh? The Independent, this is great! This place is great. Right behind us, like a block away, is the park with all the houses, the painted ladies that they show in the, uh, the opening credits to Full House. Which is ironic, because we've got a full house tonight. We really do. Is that... How, are they, is there a bunch of Batmans up there? You see it's Batman? Like, yeah, there's like uh, several silhouettes in the, the distance of, of the dark. plural of man is men, by the way. <laughs> yeah, Batman. Batman? Batman, yes. Yeah. Would you say Batman? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't like that I can't see their faces. I know, I don't like it either. Is like, there a shooter up there? Be <laughs> <laughs> careful. Just waiting for him to swoop they down. They feel on like them. they could just put their thumb down and we'd have to kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, uh, I normally make fun of cities here up top, but I cannot make fun of San Francisco because this is a great fucking town. <laughs> This is a great a, town. You don't give him any material. There's no, there's no material. I've been sitting all day trying to think of something negative. I can't do it. I shit you not. If it was this kind of weather eight months out of the year, but then it was still really cold and snowy uh, during the winter months, I would move here. 
but I need the snow. I need the cold. I need it. I can't have a, a Christmas that's like breezy and 70. I'd kill myself. <laughs> I would kill myself. <laughs> it's not called baby, it's 70 and foggy outside. That doesn't work. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you need, you need the cold, you need the snow, or at least some rain. It rains like twice a year here. Gr- October to March, I want it cold. Get rid of the hippies and I'll move here, I promise. <laughs> Just push them all into the bay, add some snow, <laughs> and I will move here tomorrow. Are there any hippies here tonight? Get out of here! God, I st- oh. still a lot here. I strictly said no hippies. <laughs> They were supposed to ask at the door. Gah! No long hairs, we said. No long, <laughs> no long hairs need to apply for the VIP If you like list. a jam band, don't come in here. <laughs> <laughs> sign, sign, everywhere is sign. <laughs> as, uh, as most of you know by now, of course, uh, Matthew Capitacasa had to sit out this week. Um, it was, yeah, it was weird uh, not having someone look down their nose and judge us all weekend. <laughs> yeah. It was weird having no one to hold us back in the green room. Yeah. <laughs> so it got really out of hand back then. <laughs> we, it turns out we do need him. Yes. Yeah, the Jared thing was a big swing in the other direction, it was. Yeah, too. It, it wasn't was. like a neutral. It was yes. a big swing. I remember I just brought out a huge bag of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah, and I was like, who wants to go skiing, I said. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> Direct quote. Right. <laughs> Give it up for old baby Jared Logan, Jared everybody! Old baby. Jared! Jared! Jared Logan. I'm full of shawarma and ready to play. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, you, uh, you drove here with Joe uh, mm-hmm. from L.A. to yeah. SF, and we would have happily flown you, but you said, no, I'll go with Joe, because not only... Are you a company man, but you're also a man who has not known Joe long enough to know the dangers of prolonged exposure to him? Yeah. Well, I always say that's the best way to take a road trip with somebody, someone who you're friends with, but you don't know super well, so we sort of interviewed each other about our lives, and now I'm good on Joe and don't need to do that again. <laughs> you are the experts on Joe. Yeah. <laughs> I summed up my life in 36 minutes. Yeah. Like, this is the interesting things in my life. It went right. quick. It went quick. Uh, yeah, no, uh, it's a bummer that Matthew's not here, but uh, this, is, this has been great to have you, and uh, thank, you for, thank you for doing this. this oh, thank great. you. Thank you, Jared. Oh, thank you, buddy. Please. I was doing nothing at home. <laughs> Well, now let me introduce you to three men who remind me of the 2022 NBA champion Golden State Warriors. <laughs> they remind me of the Warriors because I hate them! <laughs> <laughs> I hate them so fucking bad. Four rings, Troy, four. Yeah. Congratulations to those Warriors. Man, just, just the better team. Yeah, I, you know what? Not only the better team, but it, just, it was just more heart. Yeah, you know, it was more just heart. more likable, top to bottom. Yeah, top I, to I, bottom. There's just something about them that just made me want to root for them. Yeah, they they didn't phone it in. You know didn't what I mean? Phone it like, in. Just half really, when the chips were down, they delivered. And you can't say that about it, every NBA team. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I'm still not over it. It's not cool. <laughs> it really is too soon. It's yeah, really it's not cool. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, first up is, is a man who was disappointed to find out that the Saf- San Francisco Giants were a baseball team and uh, not a chance to be reunited with one of his people's long-lost clans. <laughs> Give it up for Grant Berger! The Berg Dog! Oh, oh, the Berger! If you felt an earthquake today, that was Grant running over the Golden State Bridge or <laughs> Golden Gate, whatever the fuck it's called. How'd you do it? You went, you went running. How many miles today? 7.55, and I got to see the painted lady. Yeah. All right. There's a good one. That's for my dating profile. <laughs> yeah. There aren't too many shows you pay to go to that are actually just trip slide trip. <laughs> right. Oh, right. Here was my trip to San Francisco. I think, it's, I think it's weird we're showing the whole thing, but keep going. <laughs> no. I think it's a great thing to show people the city they live in. You know, yeah. That's what they're very excited about. Um, are you having a fun time? Having a great time. Ran 7.55 miles and enjoying celebrating Pride in San Francisco. Happy Pride, yeah. y'all. Big Pride Town. Happy Pride. 
Um, well, I'm glad you could make it. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it was the sincerity of that statement well, that really rung did. true not with me. Not everyone did make it, yeah. so it's fair to say. Right. Yeah, and it's just a nice thing to say, and I'm learning to do that. <laughs> Just say these little niceties. Uh, oh, you'll pass the Turing test someday. <laughs> <laughs> Next is a man who is thrilled to just come to San Francisco and relax and not have to run around staking claim to land, searching for gold. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for Skidmore, everybody. <laughs> you. Thank you. Skidule Prospector, how are you, buddy? <laughs> great, great. I also love it here. Uh, thank you. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out. We didn't really get a chance. We have so many friends that have come to see us in LA and here today. I don't want to leave anyone out, but I do want to give a shout out to some people who aren't here, but we're in LA. Uh, well, Samantha's here, my girlfriend. She's up in the John hey! Wilkes booth booth up there. Uh, she, we've been having a great time. Uh, Del, father of the 8669 rule, who killed Nico, he was here in LA. They got a chance to shout him out. Also, my friend uh, Tom Breifogel, who is on the Franchise Fan Guys podcast with me. Uh, we finally got to meet in person for the first time. We've spent like 300 hours uh, talking uh, on podcasts together. Finally met him. If you saw a guy who uh, looks just like Moby with a very lovely wife, that was Tom Breifogel down in L.A. Uh, and yeah, we're having, this has been an amazing trip, except for everything that I experienced in downtown L.A. So, this is way better. This, is, this town is 100,000 times better than Los Angeles. <laughs> And then he immediately sips a 25-ounce Bud Light. That's right. Yeah. right. His third of the night. Yeah. <laughs> well, finally, is this bag of cottage cheese wrapped in a T-shirt next to me. <laughs> he, uh, let me tell you about this guy. He got a, uh, a rental car to drive from oh, L.A. to San Francisco. I have to tell this story. Come on. Oh. <laughs> He's such a piece of shit. He got a rental car to drive Dude, from... <laughs> He got the rental car because somebody had to drive the merch up and we just realized too late, like, shit, we got to get the merch up here. We don't want to ship it and have it not hit SF from LA. So he, uh, he got the rental car. Obviously, Jared went with him and he arrived yesterday one minute after the rental car place closed. And then today, he just forgot to return it. <laughs> so it's really uh, an amazing... Yeah, this is my car, right? I own this car. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. I own a car out of California. I don't it's... live in California. Just the combination of bad luck and stupidity in <laughs> one person is astounding. The look on his face during lunch when he realized yeah. was yeah. incredible. I want to bottle that look and savor it. We were eating some sushi and he was like, oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Tuna came flying out of his mouth. Uh, you might call him Frisco Joe. I call him San Francisco. Give it up for Joe O'Brien, everybody! If you're going... Frisco Joe! Frisco Joe! Oh, I love it! Oh. Frisco Joe is, uh, among all of them, is the Joe I aspire to be. This... <laughs> It's the greatest city I've ever been to in my life. You'll it's your final Frisco form. Joe. That everywhere Frisco I Joe. went. Yeah, what did you say? It's your final form. Yes. Frisco yeah, Joe I would think be that's what it is. Form. It is my ultimate. It is my self-actualization. Would be Frisco Joe. Frisco Joe. Everywhere I walked today, I was like, "That is an amazing picture. That is an amazing picture. This should be a painting." Like everywhere yeah. in this city, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Frisco yeah. Joe. Yeah. Frisco Joe. Frisco Joe loves architecture. <laughs> he does. And in my defense, I valeted the car. And I never drive a rental car to any of these shows. And so in the morning, I was like, Golden Gate Bridge. And I completely <laughs> forgot that there was a car in the hotel that I am responsible for. And then, yeah, we were sitting at lunch, a very calm lunch. And Grand very calmly was like, am I driving tonight? Or uh, are we uh, getting a lift? Or what's the plan? I was just like, boom! Oh my God! <laughs> like uh, out of nowhere. So. I woke up at like 8:30 and you were gone, and which was weird. And I was hungover. And I texted my <laughs> wife, and then she didn't write back to me. And I was like, "Am I dead? <laughs> Did I die? Did I die? Did I die? Is this heaven?" 
Uh, it was very strange. You were really up and at him today. Yeah, I was. I was very excited. I ran all the way to the Golden Gate Bridge. I didn't... That's what you look like, Joe. Joe, you look like that dog that can't have the cupcakes. That's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I ran to the Golden Gate Bridge. I never saw it. I ran to it. Not to run over it, but to run like, un, like under near it by the water to see its majesty across the bay. Uh, and I sent my parents the picture. I wish Grant had it queued up. It's just clouds. It's just clouds. I didn't see anything. And I was exhausted and my knees and ankles hurt so bad. And I just turned around and I walked home. <laughs> Should have taken the rental car. <laughs> uh, yeah, too bad you didn't have a car. You could have just driven. <laughs> really would have made that easier. Uh, God damn it. We got some a wonderful Pliny the Elder from uh, Sazul. Where's Pliny? Sazul? Uh, Pliny. Sazul, Pliny. thank Pliny. you so much. But, uh, thank Pliny. you. Oh, hey, over there. Don't threaten me with a good time, you son of a bitch. This is delicious. Thank you. Ooh, sorry, I got excited. Oh, 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 it's it's get back in there, fella. All right, let's keep the show clean. Um, We uh, we have quite the show ahead of us tonight. (laughs) Did everybody listen to the LA show? You caught up? (laughs) All right. Oh, this is good. Things are about to get weird. Grant, take it to the recap, good buddy. Oh. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Melted gold. I love it. Solid gold. That might have been sand too. It's a nice. Looked uh, like popcorn. Sand. 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 Yeah. Yeah. popcorn. It did look popcorn like popcorn kernels. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I thought I was it like, was Reese's Pieces for a second. Yes. Yeah. I was been. like, is this a, the start of an AMC movie? <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Where's wow. the cool Kidman? Where, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> We'll do Heart word scrambles of Cat Matthews' name. Is that Capita Casa? <laughs> um, the L.A. show, two, was it two nights ago or was it seven weeks ago? Because I feel like I've been in California <laughs> Hard to tell. for a month and a half. Uh, that show was hot, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say tonight's show is going to be even hotter. <laughs> it might not be, but that also is just a nice thing to say. Get people fired up. I'll tell you about our heroes... They've been, trying to, they've been trying to find a man who, in an effort to raise his stature in the academic community, he traveled to the dimension of dreams to research perhaps world-shattering knowledge that has never been discovered on the material plane. While in the dreamlands, this man, whose name is Count Hazerton Lyles IV, met a person known as the Mad Poet who revealed some sort of knowledge to him. But in order to even get a chance to speak to this figure, Lyles had to travel across the dreamlands in search of gifts to give the mad poet for fear he would not speak to him or even worse, destroy him. Lyles found these items, met the mad poet, and somewhere in that meeting, our hero's minds and memories were sacrificed and they were put in an asylum to die. Here you go, you dummy. We're having a good time. The second I do the recap, he's got a million things to say. Well, they're out of the asylum, and while their past is still cloudy, they are hot on Lyle's trail. They boarded a boat, and they're heading south in search of Lyle's. But in the meantime, they've discovered and enacted the ritual Lyle's used to enter the dreamlands, and they found themselves in the middle of a desert outside of an abandoned way station. They soon realize, in fact, that it is not abandoned. They're attacked by living dreams, haunts, nightmare oozes, but they also find a lost soul in there. A man who appears to have spent most of his life in the dreamlands after being separated from his family, his mother, long ago. Raised by a family of tentacled-faced squirrel monsters known as Zooks, this man has clearly had a rough go of it in the dreamlands. Uh, and all he's ever wanted to do is to return home and be reunited with his family. That man is named King Xantar of the Zoogs. Yes! Ah! Ah! With 
With their new friend in tow, our heroes ascend to the second floor of the caravanserai where they meet a man dressed head to toe in yellow robes, a man some of you recognize as Count Lyles. But he insists he is not Lyles. He is, in fact, the Yellow King, a splintered part of Lyles' consciousness that came to be when the mad poet shared truths with the real Lyles that fractured his mind and left a piece of it behind in the dreamlands. The Yellow King explains that Lyles researched far and wide to try and find the locations of seven specific gifts to give to the mad poet, and he wrote the names of those gifts down in one of his books. If the heroes find those gifts and return to the way station, the Yellow King can escort them to the mad poet's oasis, for he remembers the way. So you awoke, back on the boat, along with your new friend, Xantar, and get to work. You find the list of seven items and work together combing through Lyle's tomes about each item. The first of which is a Viscount's signet ring. You discover that the ring in question belongs to a Viscount Pietro Brellin, a noble living in the dreamland city of Celefe, who is known for hosting luxurious galas where the attendees are very careful not to do a single thing out of place for fear of losing the Viscount's favor and not getting invited back to his sweet parties. <laughs> You enact the Dream Ruins ritual, which takes you two nights this time after a failed attempt the first time, and you find yourself in an enormous ballroom full of thousands of people dancing, talking, and enjoying a party in a city where time does not move and the sun never sets. On a dais far to the south sits, presumably, this Viscount, whose signet ring you seek. He's surrounded by guards, valets, well-wishers. And as you take in this crazy scene, you see a visibly drunk man bump into a woman, knock her wine glass out of her hand, and then suddenly a rope of some sort flies down from the ceiling, pulls this man up, and then you just hear screaming and little drips of blood. <laughs> so fucked up. Followed by drips of black and green, and then a bunch of servants come over and just... <laughs> <laughs> Clean it up. Let's go to the map. <laughs> Look at this amazing map that I spent a lot of time on. As I said in LA, that uh, this would actually, to the north there, it would just keep going. That was great, that was good the way you cut it off. Just imagine, it just keeps going, thousands of people. And you four dummies. You see these people just partying, hanging out. There are windows, windows that look on to the city beyond and musicians are standing in front of these windows playing songs. Do you have that uh, cool music you were playing last time? That uh, string I, music? I deleted all of it. That's not... <laughs> I, no, I'll I bring have, it back. I I'll bring it. it back. I have it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is some party. <laughs> <laughs> that may be... I made myself laugh so hard with that in L.A. I'm, I'm sure I found it funnier than anyone else did. I'm with you, man. I just the idea of walking up to yes. this count's house and just the bass thudding yeah, the bass out like, of the walls yeah. of, like, a college party was... <laughs> chef's kiss, kid. Chef's thank, kiss. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> X-Call, give it to you. You, uh... You stand there, you, if you look out the windows, you see the reddish light of sunset coming in, but you know that sun will never set. But beyond uh, the windows, you see an enormous city of marble buildings, high columns, and beyond this opulent city is a enormous mountain crowned with snow. And there's the sun hanging just a fraction above the horizon, horizon, horizon. <laughs> <laughs> As they say in this land. Horizon Zero John. <laughs> Bam! Strong start. <laughs> Bottle cap. Good save. <laughs> Horizon Zero John. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I needed that save. He's always there to pick you up when you fall. Horizon. <laughs> the sun's hanging there, and 
There's a quartet of musicians playing this elegant mu music in front of every single window. There it is. There it is. Um, to the south here, you see this high platform bearing a throne with a, a commanding view of the festivities, uh, just rising above the ballroom, and this man sitting above the throne, taking it all in. What do you do? Uh, Aldo huddles up with the other three and says, oh, I've got an inkling about what he's still got. He's got Werner like writhing around in his goiter in his neck. So it's like, oh, I've got an inkling that we don't, we don't want to rock the boat here. I think that we've got to try to maintain etiquette as best as we can, because I think we've seen what happens if somebody shakes things up. And he sort of like looks over at Xantar. I will challenge him for his ring. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I don't believe that would be the best tactic. I will make a show of strength. He will cower in fear. He is soft. Ah! Oh, shh! What? Oh, couple too people loud. Look <laughs> over. <laughs> it's all right. He's just had too much to drink. I'm so sorry. Yes. Sent. <laughs> Sent her. Ah! Ah! His, his weakness of body is not of concern here. He could quite quickly take you from one of these ropes to the ceiling and crush you in one move. Yeah. Be very careful. So I just mingle then. <laughs> yeah, just mingle. <laughs> you look like you'd be amazing at mingling. I, I want to say be yourself, just be yourself, but, just, but don't. Ah. Don't do that. Whatever the opposite is of what you would do, do that. Think of what someone spineless and weak would do. Ah. And do that exactly. I will try. It is very hard for me to be weak. I am a creature of strength and power. Of course, and your grace. <laughs> <laughs> but we must rise to the moment. Very well. <laughs> I will act as you soft, civilized people do. And uh, he takes a, uh, like a, a flute of champagne off of uh, a tray, and then he, he just bites into it. <laughs> Gently nibbles the, the yeah. blood gushing. And he's just, chew, he's just chewing on glass. No, no. no I oh. All right, well, we'll get as far as we can. How about that? At, uh, Atticus, taking out those ladies, agrees completely, and he feels comfortable in this setting for some reason. He feels that he's been in situations uh. like this before, trying to mingle with the aristocracy despite him not being part of that aristocracy. So he would like to try to mingle with a few guests and uh, find out information, basically. Okay. Oh, hello. Uh, oh, good evening. Uh, what is your name, good uh, sir? I'm Atticus of the court of uh, Baron Hess. Oh, the court of Baron Hess? I have not heard of him. <laughs> not heard of the court of Baron Hess. Uh, no, no, I, I do apologize. I don't mean to offend, but I've never heard of Baron Hess. This is very strange, but uh, I will not hold it against you. Yes. Uh, Atticus, you said? Atticus, and you, sir, your name. Uh, well, I, of course, am uh, the Duke Bernie Tremblay. <laughs> Bernie Tremblay. <laughs> yes, Bernie Tremblay. <laughs> uh, perhaps, perhaps you've heard of me. The Duke Tremblay, of course. I am honored, and he steps back knowing the rank of Duke is badass as fuck. So he takes a, a gentle step back, bows, and he bows back up, for you, and, well, and goes a little lower with his bow. And so he goes like a little down lower. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how they do it here. Yes. <laughs> no, that's quite low enough. You're very kind. Ah, that's <laughs> so he stands back up. Uh, the Viscount is. Uh, Yes, if I count. Uh, isn't this lovely here, this party? It's so nice to be invited to this party. It is quite lovely. Yes. Is it something he does all, quite often, or oh. is this a, a rare event? Oh, no, no, this is something he does quite often. It is quite an honor to get invited, as I'm sure you know, since you are here. Oh, it well. is my first. Oh, it is your first. To be well. honest, I'm quite nervous. Oh, well, I can understand that. I remember my first party at the Vicons. I was very nervous as well, but I know how to do things here, and I've grown quite accustomed to my parties here. 
of the Viscounts. Well, I, I would very much like to uh, speak to the Viscount, thank him for his generous invitation. Is that something that would be frowned upon at this stage of the evening? Um, no, no, I think that should be fine, uh, provided you act uh, as I'm sure a man of your stature working for the Baron Hess, as it were. Uh, Baron Hess, as yes, it were. I'm sure if you approach him with a, in a genteel manner, he would, he would receive you, yes. He would be quite interested to meet you if it is your first time, I'm sure. Excellent, excellent. I, I shall try to talk to him. I need to thank him. All right, well, yes, sir. It was a pleasure meeting you. Atticus Grimm, uh, was Atticus it? Grimm, it's a pleasure meeting you, sir. Yes, yes. <laughs> what was walk my over. name again? Bernie Trombley. Yes, uh, Duke Bernie. Uh, best of the evening to you. And, and to you as well. He'll come back over to Atticus. I believe we can speak with him. I believe he will take, uh, he will t- take attendees and allow them to speak with him, so. Good. He seemed quite skillful in talking to their, uh, that sort of upper crust sort of person. Yes, I don't know where quite it comes from. I think I, I have a feeling like I, like I deeply despise them, but I know how to mimic their ways. Oh, it's quite interesting, isn't it? It is. It's funny, isn't it? We don't know where we came from, and maybe you are royalty, like in your background or something. Well, perhaps royalty do despise royalty. Well, perhaps know. you just don't like yourself. <laughs> I'm really digging deep here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just throwing it out. I, I don't know. I like you. Well, we, we were in service of the Count, were we not? So perhaps we that's were at true. some of these Maybe very we have, events. That's our experience shining through. Yes. Uh, what about you, Halster? Are you feeling comfortable in this situation? Well, I, um, I'm a little shy to admit, but I rather like the idea of dancing. <laughs> but does, does Mate, anyone... I think you should, you should dance, yeah. Take a dance. Does anyone, would anyone like to waltz with me? There is a question, though. Are you quite good at dancing? If you don't know how to do it, it could be rather bad. And he looks down at the medium armor, just the chainmail all over him, and realizes what an effing mess he's going to make if he dances and steps on someone's foot accidentally. Um, maybe, um, Xanta. Ah. Would you <laughs> fancy a dance with me? I will do a dance of the Zooks. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Perhaps you should lead. The dance of praise. I will, ex- I will show through my body that I am happy to be here and that I am thankful and gratitude <laughs> for the food that has been provided. Ah! Ah! <laughs> uh, are we dancing together? Is that what you're... Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, yes. Very well. Follow my lead. <laughs> and I pull... You out onto the floor. <laughs> and uh, Atticus will go to one of the musicians and, and, and say, uh, perhaps something a bit uh, more Peppy, exciting. Peppy, 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 yes, 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 plays yes, that. Um, and they stop and start something a little peppier. <laughs> um, I look, uh, Xantar looks over at you like, okay, uh, I guess this will do. Uh, and then uh, it's sort of like a tribal, like, ah, 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 yes, 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 I love it, yes, yes. This is going to get us killed, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It sure is. You are pressing every button of Troy right now to just, like, rope. As you're doing the Lombada, um... Everybody, the- everybody roll a perception check. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> that could be worse. Uh, 25 for Atticus. Anybody get higher than 25? Uh, 16 for Eldo. Uh, yeah, this is not good. Natural one for a 17. Ooh. Well, you're too busy dancing. <laughs> I imagine you're all uh, focused on this, That's but uh, Atticus, as you're watching them boogie down, you hear something above, like a clicking, like oh, a... Oh, no. And you just look up, and it's just pitch black up there, but there's, like, crisscrossing, crisscrossing patterns of darkness above, and you hear something moving around up there. You better end the dance. I think we've made your point. Uh, step away. Uh, yes, yes, uh, lovely, well lovely stuff. Well done. 
Yes, yes, of course. Uh, yes. You've all just been treated to the traditional dance of the zoo. Halster crosses his legs and curtsies. <laughs> shall we? Shall we uh, uh, indulge these ambassadors from a faraway land? I do not know your ways. <laughs> <laughs> I performed a dance of gratitude. <laughs> I hope you will take it in the spirit it was intended. <laughs> okay, all right, best keep your thoughts to yourself. I do not know oh. your ways. <laughs> You're still naked too, right? I am very <laughs> naked. And, and for some reason, his, his muscles are always covered in perspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Sweaty is one of my favorite character traits. I'm very, very happy with that. And no one bats an eye at you. No one looks at you uh, any uh, strangely at all. You're just naked and no one gives you the time of day. Uh, uh, could I do a roll on this? Yeah. Could I, uh, perhaps an occultism role or an arcana role to see if maybe there's something in the dreamlands where like people don't, they don't notice things for a certain reason or not, or they don't need, want to or need to, or they, I don't know. Like, can I yeah, try you can roll role? occultism. Uh, the research that you gained when you were looking through Lau's books is that uh, people are really afraid to lose the Viscount's favor and not be invited back to parties. So it would be rude to say something about okay. his nakedness or rude to uh, say something about that weird dance um, because people don't want to offend the Viscount. Do we see any evidence of the city being frozen in time? You mentioned that last yeah, time. Yeah, like you've been here at this point maybe 15, 20 minutes and the sun hasn't moved at all. It's but the people stuck. are moving. Uh, the people are moving, yeah. Okay. But outside the windows, time seems frozen. Okay. Um, Atticus would like to approach the Viscount. All right, so you start approaching the dais, and there are several attendants, guards, functionaries clustering nearby, ready to serve the Viscount at a moment's notice. He's sitting atop his throne. As you get closer, you start to see a little more uh, what he looks like. Then he's a rather urbane and handsome man, high cheekbones, blonde hair, sympathetic green eyes as he looks over the uh, fet. He uh, has more lavish clothing than anyone there. Even the nicest clothing you've seen, uh, his exceeds uh, even that of the most finely dressed guests. Now, something strange happens as you approach because uh, for all intents and purposes, he looks pretty healthy. But as you watch him lean over to talk to someone, he starts coughing. And as he coughs, like a tar-like phlegm comes out of his mouth. Just like, oh. And like a tar-like phlegm comes out and it stains his chin and the frock around his neck. And no one even bats an eye at it or watches it or makes any notice of it. Let me show you a picture of this. Oh my God. This oh fellow. my God. I don't know if I can see this dude. Oh no. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Oh, a fancy uh, lad. Yes, he is a man. fancy lad. I hate <laughs> them fancy lads. Look at that. What do you call that thing around his neck? That's a, a rough. rough. Yeah. yeah. So it's all stained with uh, this tarry phlegm. Can you see it here on the screen? Yeah. Yeah. I can make it a little bigger. He's also rather handsome. Green eyes. Reddish brown hair. And he seems to be lightly, gently dabbing the horror black phlegm from his, from his <laughs> lips. As if nothing were wrong. May I roll a medicine check? I don't know why I'm talking about <laughs> Can I roll a medicine sure, check? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, 24. You have no fucking idea what's going on. <laughs> no shit, seriously. That <laughs> is not normal. <laughs> He's <really good. clears throat> um, Atticus, can he... How close can he get to him? Can he walk up the stairs? Uh, as you start to approach, dais? you see all the guards sort of look at you, but no one tries to intercept you. So he'll say, hey, excuse me. Excuse me, so sorry, so sorry. And he moves past them, if they allow, and up the steps. Um, yeah, and as you do, the Viscount looks towards you. Oh, hello. And what might your name be? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Count Brelin. Oh, Viscount. Sorry. Pietro Brelin, yes. Uh, Viscount. Uh, what is your name? 
fucking hate this already. This is horrible. <laughs> I am Atticus Grimm. Oh, Atticus Grimm. Court a magician fine to name. Baron Hess. A magician and a, a magician to a baron, no less. How lovely. Welcome to my soiree. I must say, I don't recognize you as residents of Celefe, you and your friends. Uh, where do you come from? <laughs> <laughs> We have traveled quite far, indeed. Uh, we have come at the Baron's behest to uh, entertain your guests and hopefully improve the uh, the happiness of your party. You are here as entertainers? I don't remember hiring any entertainers of your sort. And you said the name was Baron Hess. He leans over to a guy. Very interesting. No, of course you would not. Have, we would not have been hired. We would not do something so uncouth as to ask for payment. Uh, simply having the honor of entertaining your guests is all that is needed for the Baron Hess. Oh, well, that is quite kind then. It sounds rather uh, juicy. <laughs> 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 what a, an honor, then, it is to have you join us on this day. Please partake in refreshments and, and dancing. You are most welcome here, you and your entertainer friends. Is he wearing a ring, a signet ring? Uh, you look at his hands and you don't see a ring. Interesting. Uh, I, will, I was told, Viscount, uh, yes. that, that in order to... Uh, uh, in order to properly introduce myself, I was to uh, kiss your ring. Um, but I'm afraid I don't see one. Oh, that is quite kind of you to even offer. I, normally, I do have a, a signet ring. It's so funny you should even mention that. For someone came here not long ago and asked for that very ring, but I am not wearing one now. No, that person asked for your ring. That's rather strange. It was rather strange, yes. Um, well, you just want to kiss it, yes? Well, that is well, my original intention, but now I'm quite curious. Did you give this person the ring? As a matter of fact, I did. He was quite kind, and he helped me out with a little problem. And uh, if you'd like to kiss my ring, perhaps you could uh, help me as well, and I could have one of my valets fetch you a fresh ring. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, <laughs> well, that would be most lovely, of course. I, I, we are here at your service, Viscount Brennan. Oh. Anything, anything you need, the Baron Hess is insistent that we uh, do your every bidding. So. The Baron Hess is that name again. So uh, well, if you are here to help, then... This is rather fortuitous, since uh, I've never seen you before, then perhaps most of my guests haven't seen you either, and I'm in a bit of a predicament right now that perhaps you could help me with. By all means, go on. Well, uh, uh, this is rather embarrassing for me to say, but um, uh, you probably don't know this, but this is your first time at my ball, but the most prestigious <laughs> test. <laughs> 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 I mean, you were, you've been doing the voice for five minutes. I don't know why just then. It's really. <laughs> this is your first time at my ball. It's my ball. <laughs> <laughs> this is like mouth goes unnaturally oh. long. My ball. <laughs> yes. So you probably don't realize that the most prestigious dance we have here at my fits is the Sunset Waltz. And I have just learned that my beloved will be arriving at the ball just in time for the Sunset Waltz, when previously I thought they wouldn't make it at all, let alone in time. Unfortunately, fool that I am, I have already promised to perform the Sunset Waltz this evening with other guests. Three others, in fact. Oh, what was I thinking? Especially now with my beloved arriving. My dance card is a bit uh, overfull, as they say. <laughs> and then everyone around him starts laughing. <laughs> as I'm sure you can imagine, I do not wish to offend my beloved, as I would prefer to dance with them over anyone. So perhaps you and your entertainer friends working for the... Baron Hess, you say? Uh, yes, Baron Hess. 
Perhaps from G.I. Joe, is that what you're talking about? It's the Baroness. <laughs> Perhaps you and your friends could just break off my promises to these three other attendees. Mm. Are, oh. you, are you experienced in breaking off? Uh, well, it's not something I would do. I would have people do it for me. And should you do that, then I would fetch a fresh ring for you. It sounds easy enough. Absolutely no problem. You should never put yourself in such a position to be so embarrassed, Viscount. We are happy to take on this rather ugly chore for you. Oh, you're too kind. Now, here's the thing. I urge you to handle this with the utmost discretion and diplomatically. I do not want to embarrass anyone here, especially my guests. (laughs) (laughs) As the nude dwarf nods sagely. Uh, uh, Yes. Uh, their names, if you could be so kind, and description. Oh, yes, well, there's the elegant lady Adrenda Splinterbone, uh, and then there's an influential trader here among the attendees. His name is Arvin Telgriet, and a beautiful but common woman named Modette. Do not tell my beloved, but I must admit I was rather taken with this young woman, so much so that I simply could not say no to her. Now... I'm not sure where they are in this party, but I encourage you to ask around. Get to know my guests. They are among the most elite here in Salafé. We thank you for this opportunity to serve you. I shall report back when all engagements have been broken. Very good. Enjoy yourselves. And he starts talking to somebody else. Uh, We'll walk away. I'll walk away. I'm not there. I'll walk away. <laughs> I, I think I was there. Yeah, I think you were there. I think Halster I, was there, I, too. You know what? Point. I don't walk away. I stay. <laughs> yeah, just no, keep no. standing there. No. <laughs> uh. The Count, the Viscount, uh. breaks off his conversation. And, uh, may I help you? Oh, I walk away now. Okay, okay. Uh. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry. Sorry, King. <laughs> Black tar coming uh-huh. out of his mouth. What do you do? Well, first we go f- first find yeah. Aldo. Like, where, where did Aldo go? Yeah, where? Why? Well, I, well, I did come up to the. I know, I know. I'm just fucking around. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, so you regroup somewhere on the dance we floor. We regroup. I'll give him. I'll, I'll give the names, and say that we need to break off the the uh, Viscount's commitment to dance tonight. Right. In the most so uh, diplomatic. Diplomatic uh, way, yes. yes. So Without making the Viscount look bad. Right, so it's Modette. Modette, Lady the commoner. Mo- right. Lady Adrenda Splinterbone. Adrenda Splinterbone. Ardvin Telgriet. And a woman simply named Modette. Okay, right. Um, pardon me, Duke Tremblay. Uh, your Grace, if I could have a word. Oh, yes. Was this my voice? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> um, what? I didn't catch your name. I only met your friend here who worked with Baron Hess. Oh, my name is Baronet uh, Tom Bombadil. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> a Baron? How? Uh, it is a pleasure to make an acquaintance. Well, a pleasure to make yours as well, mate. I mean, uh, your grace. Oh. <laughs> It's very kind. Uh, how may I be of uh, service? Well, we could see that. Uh, what was that? Sorry. Uh, how may I be of uh, service? <laughs> yes. Sorry. Uh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Just bad ear. Uh, we are looking for three people. Uh, oh. We wish to relay a message from His Royal Majesty up on the dais. There. I wonder if you could point us in the direction, perhaps, of one Adrendus Splinterbone. Adrendus Splinterbone. Uh, give me a diplomacy check. Mm. Uh, that is a natural 13, and that will be a 14. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know that name. She does not ring a bell, although I'm sure she is most welcome here at the Viscount's ball. I'm sorry, is it the writhing hedgehog in my neck that's turning you off? Oh, no, I I, I didn't even notice, uh, if you're being quite honest. 
Very polite. I appreciate it. Perhaps someone else would like to take a turn? Uh, I, uh, uh, okay. Uh, Zan- <laughs> uh, I got this. I got this. Xantor of the Zoogs remembers the names and crawls like a spider around the party, <laughs> carefully listening for the names. <laughs> Using a perception check. Sliding along the parking floor. Which he has more than a plus one at. Okay, give me a perception check. Oh, wow, you're going to let me do this? Sure. All right. Great, here we go. That is a nat 20. Uh, Oh, shit! Wow. The Zooks have keen ears, <laughs> and they taught me their ways. Uh, that's all together. That's, you know, 30, I don't know, 30, two. F- 32. 32, okay. So you're crawling around like a weirdo. <laughs> Listening for the names. <laughs> Listening for Modette and Adrenda Splinter Bean and uh, <laughs> R.D. Hale Moth- he Mother. He doesn't remember the names. <laughs> I remember them. I remember them. He's listening. It was like, just crawling back saying, what were the names again? <laughs> Crawling around, eavesdropping, listening, and then at a certain point, your ears uh, perk up. You hear someone say, oh, did you hear the Lady Splinterbone is here this evening? And uh, they're talking. It's like, oh, I'm I'm told that uh, she is to dance with the Viscount. So maybe you hone in, try and listen to that conversation. Yes. And they're just gossiping about the Lady Splinterbone, but they're doing it under their breath because they don't want to look out of place. Like, oh, it's quite an honor to speak uh, to dance with the Viscount. I cannot believe this. Are they looking at Splinterbone? Are they? Um, well, at a certain point, they uh, point their eyes in the direction of a woman, beautiful woman, uh, red lips, a uh, uh, slim fitting black dress, and her skin is almost uh, white in appearance. And uh, the guy looks and then snaps back and is like, oh, it, I, I think it's true what they say that she is a vampire. Oh, I, I'm going I'm to. I'm out. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna skulk over to her. Oh God! Hiding sort of under a table. <laughs> like and, slumping and then, the bottom of the then, table, no, no. all the glass. <laughs> yeah. This Boom. dude, sweaty dwarf, like, <laughs> crawling. <laughs> and then I'm gonna. Then I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna motion to Aldo and Atticus and Houster and be like, ah, 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 and I'm gonna do hand symbols. <laughs> Ah, ha, ha, ha. What do you think he said? I don't know. I've no idea. <laughs> I think he may Let's have to over there and check. Let's uh, go over there and ask him. Uh, did he ask what are you this say? Steel this third? This is. <laughs> this Splinterbone. What? Her. Oh. Keep Her. your voice down. Splinterbone here. Oh. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. All right, we take a look at this. Woman, the slim fitting uh, black dress. Yeah. What, what was the Resident Evil uh, Lady Dimitrescu? Or Lady Dimitrescu. Oh, yeah. yeah th- this Please is to what make she your looks acquaintance. Like. Uh, she is just stunning, and uh, everyone is kind of looking at, at her out of the side of her eye because she's so beautiful, but uh, she does have completely white skin. And uh, if you catch her smiling or laughing at a joke, uh, you do see that she does have fangs. Uh, she's just finishing up a dance with a gaunt man uh, that seems like he's out of his league dancing with a woman of her beauty. <laughs> Why does she have Freddy Krueger claws? <laughs> there she it's is. a long story. You have to play the game. Um, but you see her and now she's just standing there alone and she uh, reaches for a glass of wine and you know what's so funny is she's standing now near one of the windows and the sun is blasting right in on her. Oh, odd. She sips at her wine. Mm, good time for the music change. That was good. Yeah. It's rather disturbing. Pat yourself on the back. <laughs> Is it? Well, I didn't do it. It was pure luck. Um, if only returning rental cars was as easy as <laughs> queuing up music. The not music, my finest hour. The music changes itself. The car does not return itself. <laughs> We learned that the hard way. Clearly not. Hundreds of dollars. I don't know quite how to go about this. God. Um, uh, uh, I'm just going to go talk to her. I don't, does any, do any of you have a spectacular fucking idea of how to pull this off? No, I, w- I was, no. What yeah. do you think we should do? I think that, well, do we? 
I think Do it is mercy. Tell her the Viscount no longer desires her. No, 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 no that's no, exactly no. not what she is. She is not us. good breeding stock. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Santa, did did I understand your earlier hand messages? Did you say she was a a vampire? Yes, a sucker of blood. Perhaps if I were to allow her to exsanguinate me just a bit, this might please her. I would strongly recommend against that, Halster. Uh, it's just a dream, mate. I mean, if he's if he's game. Yeah. <laughs> Just two consenting adults. <laughs> I'm rather flabbergasted. I don't know if it's bravery or stupidity. I can't wrap my head around it. Well, it could be both. Yes. Yes, but why would this allow her to be not offended by the uh, Viscount? Well, she might, maybe she might be her. full. You know, if you have your full meal and someone knows, do you want to go dancing? You're like, no, I want to turn in. Look at her. She's wearing a corset, clearly. If she's overstuffed, it might burst and she might be unable to dance. Yeah, then she'd be embarrassed. Mm. She'd be could naked I, as Santa. Could I do a society role to know if somebody in her position would be... It would be known by everyone that she's a vampire and cool. Or if it would be like no one's talking about it because it would be super rude. And she doesn't want someone to like out her as a vampire. Sure, yeah, roll society. Um, can I do? I'll do that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's a 26. 26? What about you, Skip? Uh, I, 25. Yeah, I mean, we're in the dreamland, so you don't really know what's considered gauche here. Now, you know that as Xantar was skulking about, they were whispering in hushed tones that she's a vampire, but like, it's also pretty obvious now that you look at her that she's a vampire. Is it oh. rude to bring it up? Not 100% sure. Okay, I wouldn't open with that. It's in our back pocket. It's in our back pocket. If she's disappointed, we, we can offer it. Okay, all right. I will uh, I'll keep that in my back pocket and go uh, up there with absolutely no plan. What all. is your diplomacy? What is Atticus's diplomacy? Joe? I was thinking more deception. Oh, deception, yes. Which he does, which he is trained in by the rules of Pathfinder. Good. Edition. Just lie to her. Tell her she's not a vampire. <laughs> That'll trick her. You're not a vampire. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he'll walk up to her. Okay. Uh, she slowly turns her head and looks down towards you because she's much taller. Yes. Good evening, my lady. I would like to introduce myself. I am Atticus Grimm of the court of Baron Hess. I have come at the behest of the Viscount to speak with you on an urgent matter. You have come from the Viscount? I have, yes. Atticus Grimm. That is correct. And these are your friends, associates? Yes. These are my friends, associates, all in the court of Baron Hess. I am his court magician, and we have come to uh, entertain the guests this evening. But the Viscount has asked me to do something rather special. I do not know the Baron Hess. Where does he hail from? He hails from... Ulthar. 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 <laughs> Well, I'm on, <laughs> on the <laughs> western coast of Besselton. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, Unpar on the western coast of Besselton, yes. I have never visited myself, but... Uh, oh, it's quite lovely this is time it? of year. Though rather foggy in the mornings. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have to put it on my to-do list. But you were speaking about the Viscount. What uh, seems to be the issue? Uh, the issue, uh, it's not really an issue as much as uh, an incredible opportunity. Uh, the Viscount would uh, like to invite you to um, a personal uh, private meeting with him on the morrow. A personal private meeting with him on the morrow? Yes, he has urgent business to discuss and he like smiles a little bit uh, and is like and he would like only you to attend this meeting. I see. Well, that is uh, an interesting opportunity. Uh, 
I will uh, tell the Vine Count myself, uh, as he's promised to dance the Sunset Waltz with me. Uh, I will tell him that that meeting is uh, most agreeable. Yes, yes, of course. That is uh, the the rub, as it were, uh, is that uh, the Viscount will most unfortunately uh, need to... Um, let, let us just say uh, postpone the dance of the evening until after this very important, very private discussion tomorrow. Postpone the dance? Uh, whatever do you mean? Yeah, the Viscount is... promised me the sunset waltz and that dance will be mine. You oh. are blowing this. <laughs> please. Please. I said that very low. <laughs> All right, so she didn't hear it, but it just really hurt his chances. Like his <laughs> uh, he says, oh, no, no, not at all. The Viscount is quite aware that this is very important, and he wants to make sure, make certain that you are seen dancing together at uh, the next event. However, there is something very important he must discuss with you, and he cannot do it here this evening. He wishes not to embarrass you by telling you this to his... Uh, himself, and so he has sent us to ask you to very, very gently turn him down this evening. Intermediary, so that, yes. Yes. And if it is your choice to turn him down, well then of course the embarrassment is not on him, and in fact you look quite powerful. Ah, uh, quite powerful. Ah, uh, quite powerful. Roll a deception check. Oh boy. Come on, Frisco Joe! Here Come we on. go! Frisco Joe! Frisco Joe! Frisco Joe! Come on! Frisco Joe! Frisco Joe! Ah. Ah. That is a 20. Is that a d20? Yeah. How hell did you roll? I rolled my pride die. It's a d20. Oh. Um, she says, no, I'm going to need that dance. Unfortunately, maybe you're new here, but that dance is quite important. It is a great honor. Uh, I must have a dance one way or another. My lady, I'm sorry to step in here, but I'm and afraid... what is your name? Well, I am uh, Baronet Tom Bombadil. I'm not afraid... Baronet Bombadil, it yes, is Yes, my an jacket honor. is blue and my boots are yellow. That's perhaps you've heard of me. I have not. In any case, I am sorry. We've um, uh, engaged in a little bit of a prevarication here. Um, the Duke uh, would not want it to be known what his actual reason is for not being able to dance tonight. But unfortunately, like, kind of looks around. It's like he has the most, he is suffering from the most urgent and explosive case of diarrhea. You can see, if you look closely, some of it is actually seeping out of his mouth. That's how full he is to, to the brim of the, of the, of the half-liquid. Yes, he very, would very much like to spare you this, uh, which is why he wanted to postpone until yes, tomorrow and then a later date. We wouldn't want to jostle him. <laughs> <laughs> you could, my dear, get some on that very lovely dress. <laughs> Roll a deception. Can I aid? Can I try to assist? I can assist, right? Uh, you already failed. Well, I can assist his check. Uh, that is a 23. DC 23. Oh! Dude, when in doubt, around the RPG table, diarrhea. <laughs> Every time. Well, I must admit, I've gotten out of many an engagement uh, because of that same problem, so... <laughs> yes. I wouldn't want to <laughs> jostle him, as no. you say. No, no. The problem is, my dear boy, I need a dance, as it were. So I will look the other way this time, provided that meeting is still on the table oh, tomorrow. Oh, no, it's not, because I failed my role, so fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't listen to my friend. He rolls horribly. As a, it's part of our brand. There's a motorcycle here in this ball. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> How strange. Well, um... <laughs> you gotta add that to the rules, I guess. Yeah. Don't rev your motorcycle during yes. the show. Well, um, provided I can meet with him or not, you're being strange, uh, I, I suppose I could look the other way if... 
Perhaps one of you would dance with me. Well, perhaps you would like to dance with an armoured person? Or, uh, failing that, a nude sweaty dwarf? Ah, start flexing your pecs. Like, ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Um, <laughs> I must admit, uh, never seen the likes of him. Uh, it is, it is his way from where his peoples. It's a great honor that he would appear nude before you in this circumstance where he king. comes from. King of the Zooks. Yes. I was crowned their leader after biting off the old king's head. A king? Well, that's higher than a viscount. Yes. Uh, do you have a symbol of Phrasma showing? I do, and I'm like coquettishly rubbing my neck as I look at her. <laughs> <laughs> so well, maybe I'm... she's looking at all of you, sizing you all up, and she sees that symbol of Phrasma, and she's like, not you. <gasps> Stay away, please. Ooh. Um... All right, I'll dance with the dwarf. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Teach me your sunset waltz. Uh, yes. <laughs> Come this way. And she grasps your hand and leads you out to the dance floor. Yes. Ah. And, uh... She's, she's, uh, she's leading, by the way. Yes. He allows her to lead. And at a certain point uh, during the dance, she, she leans in to you and says, uh, it's a shame about the, the Viscount's diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Whispers in your ear. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes if you eat the wrong... <laughs> That's her, that's love language. Sometimes if you eat the wrong berries in the forest, you get very bad diarrhea. I suppose you do. <laughs> Though I must admit, either way, it is quite rude to break off a dance after you've made a promise. It would also be rude for his guests to know about his bowel problems. <laughs> but perhaps you could help me. I am feeling a bit peckish, as it were. Uh. And I admit that while I don't want to cause a stir here, I have information now that could raise my standing by taking his down. I would keep quiet should you allow me to drink you. There is a hierarchy among the beasts of the jungle. We feed on each other. <laughs> As a dominant predator, I understand your hunger. <laughs> but as an alpha, I cannot allow you <laughs> Please. to feed on me. Please, I've never had a king's blood. You I'll look be... very dead tonight. <laughs> you look very dead tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Will I become as one of you? No, no. I'll just take but a, a taste. You'll be perfectly and, uh, fine. Maybe a little tired. Are you sure you can handle the heady brew? <laughs> That pumps through my veins? <laughs> and he smashes another champagne flute. <laughs> and she says, we'll yeah! find out. <laughs> We're up in the champagne room! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! She says, we'll find out, and then it's like... <sighs> And oh she latches onto your neck and oh just starts God. sucking, and it is pretty okay. hot. Yeah. But like as she's <laughs> as she's sucking, you just start to feel really, really tired. 
Um, and then she eventually stops and she looks at you with blood dripping from her mouth, blood dripping from your mouth from the broken champagne glass. <laughs> and then she just leans forward and ever so gently kisses your bottom lip. Whoa. Ooh. Wow. And says, thanks for the dance, king. Sadly, now you are drained four. Ooh. Oh, oh. What the what does fuck that does mean? that mean? What does that mean? Let's... I don't know this game. Skid, do you have some explaining to do? Uh, yes. Do do. It is time for nerdish. Drained edition. When a creature drains you of blood or life force, you become less healthy. Shockingly. Drained always includes a value. For you, it is four. You take a status penalty equal to your drained value on constitution-based checks, such as fortitude saves. You also lose a number of hit points equal to your level times the drained value. Wow. Whoa! Oh, wow. And your maximum hit points are reduced by the same amount. For example, if you're hit by an effect that inflicts drained three and you're a third level character, you lose nine hit points and reduce your max by nine. Wow. It doesn't count as taking damage, you're just less. After a full night's rest, your drained value decreases by one. Um, obviously, were you to just wake up in the material plane, this would most likely go away. But for the rest of the party, you drained four. Which so at seventh so level my, is... My constitution's lower? No, you take 21 hit points Holy down. Holy And your shit. max goes down 20... Oh, I'm sorry. 28. 28. Jump. And My your max, max goes, goes down, down 28. 28. Okay. Jeepers. Hold on, I'm just doing math. Right. But the good news is Lady Splinterbone seems appeased by your lies. One down, two to go. This is gonna be a yeah. this is gonna be a long night. Yeah. I'm gonna crawl back to the others really pale and be like, Santar has danced with Splinter bone. <laughs> <laughs> and pleased her. Yeah. That's his new war cry. <laughs> yeah. Santa. Santa. Here, yeah, yeah. here. Yeah. And uh, Aldo pulls something off of his bandolier, his dress bandolier, given the event. And uh, he says, I take a little bit of this. I smash it against my face. Okay. <laughs> and drink it. All right. That is uh, homemade Pepsi. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> it's just, it's Pepsi? Yeah, it's homemade Pepsi. I it's, it's sweet. Yes, it should give you the quick energy you need to finish this evening. <laughs> Bravo. Oh, that's good. Bravo. <laughs> Is there a place where I can go take a shower? <laughs> sure, mate, sure. You've done great. Who oh dear. Next up. Ardvin Telgrian. You want to gather some information here to try oh, and find yes. out about this yes. dude? Yes, work the room, find out where Ardvin is. All right, uh, everybody give me a diplomacy check to gather information. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> is there anything else can be done? Perhaps society or stealth? No. No, but you can all roll it. Everyone should have... Uh, the, anybody have, like, a point? I rolled a... Uh, uh, Natural 18, so that's 20. Nice. Uh, 10 for Aldo. Okay. 15 for Atticus. Okay. Uh, five. Five. We're five. not very diplomatic. As it turns out, our time in the asylum has made us rather hard <laughs> and untrusting. So uh, Atticus and uh, Xantar, king of the Zoogs. Um, Left side. Yeah. <laughs> left side Stage uh, left yeah. now, now that I have been weakened I am better at mingling <laughs> <laughs> I am weak like you rat creature Yes, yes Appearing weak is very important 
You are, uh, you talk, you're talking around and you meet someone who's like, oh, he's over there. He is uh, 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 very wealthy and well-respected, but doesn't spend much time in Celefe. And you look over and you see this guy is surrounded by a group of people that are all trying to vie for his attention. Uh, and he, uh, the way the Viscount spoke about him is that he was a, a very well-respected trader here. Um, so you just see a bunch of perhaps sycophants uh, surrounding him, mm-hmm. asking him questions. Do we know what he, he trades in, or would we have to ask about that? You'd have to ask, yes. Okay. He's a thin, dark-skinned man with short, dark hair and a neatly trimmed goatee, uh, and he looks like he loves being the center of attention. I'm just, it's not my jam, man. <laughs> Go and talk to him. Fuck. <laughs> let, no, let, let uh, my best friend here, let him talk. He hasn't done anything tonight. I don't. <laughs> I was saving him for the commoner. He's rather common. Oh, right. He could probably relate to her. You're just angry because I shaved you. Yes, because you shaved me and filled me up with some horrific black fluid. I think you look rather fetching. Party in the front, business in the back. It's like a reverse mullet you have now. Thank you so much, Halster. Sure, go ahead, give it a shot. See if you can get to uh, catch his eye. He can't stand this shit. Can't stand it. Like, <laughs> like, like uh, people that like everyone's like trying to get their attention, and the person is just like deciding who yeah. they talk to. He's been through this shit, and it, it's such a miserable existence for like a struggling magician, you know, to try to catch the eye of a aristocrat to like get hired and stuff. And so uh, it just it, it brings pangs of anger uh, into him. And so he's he's happy to let Halster take a shot. Okay. Oh wait, here now, Halster. I've got, let's do a, uh, a, 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 we'll work them together. How about that? A little flim flam. Yeah, a little bit of a flim flam action. All right. Full of my lead. <laughs> what could go wrong? Perfect. <laughs> so we get near him, uh, uh, the circle of sycophants. He says something and everyone in the group is like, <laughs> 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 Yes! Oh. Very clever, very yes. clever. So anyway, and he turns to house and it's just like, I've got loads and loads of this miracle substance and I just have no way to get it out to the people to whose hands would appreciate it the most. I mean, surely there are millions and millions of coins to be earned. I have no idea how you have any of that miracle substance left. It does, well, miracles. It is. It's miraculous Miraculous. Is is. That's the word I was looking for. I can't keep enough of it on the shelves when people know what it is. I've rubbed it all over my buttocks and it shines. And look how shiny your look buttocks have become. Look at my shiny buttocks. I've commented so many times <laughs> on how shiny your buttocks have looked lately. All thanks to this miracle cream. Ardvin, uh, his interest is piqued by this weird conversation. <laughs> And he's like, my good man, um, what is this uh, miracle substance you speak of? Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for you to overhear our very private conversation. I didn't mean to interrupt, but you see, well, it's this. And he pulls another vial of the homemade Pepsi off of his (laughs) bandolier. And he says, like, well, it's this wonderful substance that I've invented uh, myself and... Well, I just, uh, people love it, and they'll pay through the nose to get it, but unfortunately I just don't have any contacts here, and they say, oh, I just Pay through the nose, you say? Oh, yeah. Uh, May I ask uh, your name, and uh, where are you from? My name is Baronet Tom Bombadil. (laughs) Baronet Tom Bombadil. (laughs) And I uh, am from the Forest of Lorien. I must admit I'm not familiar with the Forest of Lorien, but it doesn't uh, encroach on my territory. No, uh, when it is protected by a girdle, so it's very difficult for a uh, trade to happen uh, back and forth. Across tell it. me more about this uh, miracle substance you have here. You say you can't, uh, you can't help but sell it everywhere you go. No, it is a proprietary blend that I have come up with myself, and the minute anyone gets a taste of it, well, they just can't get enough. Well, that uh, sound quite interesting, and I uh, must admit I uh, deal in uh, trading goods such Do as Do you this. indeed? I How 
unfortunate. Yes. <laughs> um, Almost as miraculous as the salve itself. Well, now, let's not go overboard. You're right, There's you're right. very little <laughs> on this green earth that is of anywhere close to as miraculous as this substance. But yes, it is fortunate in its own way. Really? And uh, how much of this do you have and are willing to perhaps part with? 14,000 gills worth. Gills? I'm not familiar with well, that Well, it is a um, unit of measurement that we use at the Forests of Lorien. Ah, the Forests of Lorien, yes. Yes. Oh, well, um, uh, may I ask what that would cost if I wanted to buy, say, all of it? Well, all of it, you say? Well, I don't know. I'd be a lot of... Uh, Upset customers back at the old forest if I had to unload all of it. But if you did want to buy all of it, I guess I would have to say 14 billion gold pieces. <laughs> hey, hey, aim high. Aim high. You can always come down. My good man, I'm sure your substance is quite special, as you say, but that's a pretty high amount. I understand. I, I've consulted with my friend here. And yes. He, he suggests, and I agree, that you do have an honest face. Well, thank you. That's very kind. Yes. So, that being the case, uh, given the good face discount, I could let it go for 10 billion gold pieces. That still seems incredibly high. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Perhaps uh, we were not meant to do business with each other. Right, you've twisted my arm. I don't know your land and your ways. Your modern ways frighten and confuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I could give it all up, a whole barrel full, for ten gold. <laughs> That's a billion percent decrease. That is a very <laughs> steep discount, sir. You'd be a fool to walk away from it. Would you like to apply some to see how it... No, no, I don't think that will be necessary. Well, buttocks I... could look quite as shiny as his. Uh, buttocks aside... In moments. I'm not sure what game it is you're playing, but I don't think I uh, want to play anymore. Uh, good day to you both. Well, uh, <laughs> you... Uh, so. Uh, of course, it was, it was foolish of me to try to put one over on one so handsome. Well, it's very kind of you to notice my looks, but uh, I, I believe... Scarcely our, look away. I believe our time is done here, sir. I have other associates I'd like to speak with. Peddle your wares elsewhere. Perhaps you'd like to speak with a sweating dwarf. <laughs> Pardon me. Oh, shit. <laughs> Ice cold. Wow. And he just goes about talking with his friends and they kind of like move to block you off from their circle. I really like my homemade Pepsi. I think it's quite good. <laughs> it's really delicious, regardless of what I lied about my brother. A bit buddy. angry now. Yeah, I would be too. Santa. <laughs> yeah, Santa is shivering in a corner. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still really angry at you, man. That was... I wanted her to bite me. You, you, you really don't want that. <laughs> Attic Atticus, you overheard this whole conversation. Obviously, the goal here is to break off the dance with this guy. Um, Aldo and Halster took, a, took an angle that didn't quite work. Uh, do you and your drained friend have another option? Oh, God. Fucking creative ideas on the spot. A guy, uh, you know, there's a, there's a guy standing nearby while Aldo and Halster are trying to sell the uh, snake oil to him. And uh, he says, uh, do you know Arvin? No, no. This is our first time attending the party. And um, I, I am keen to speak with him. He seems like he could uh, be rather influential in my financial matters. <laughs> oh, yes. He's... He believes himself to be rather influential, but it's all about this dance this evening. It's a big deal for him. Well, yes, I mean, a dance with the Viscount is 
could be life-changing, of yes. course, but um, you seem rather perturbed. Well, uh, you have to understand, Arvin is uh, quite rich, but all he cares about is money, and he needs the prestige of associating with the Viscount to continue building his financial connections. He is by far the wealthiest trader here at the ball, yet he constantly schemes for further profit, and that hurts me and my partners as well. He wants to dance this sunset waltz only for concomitant financial benefits. He's a greedy fool. Dance is cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> the Viscount no want to dance with him tonight. Really? We come to cancel dance. You. <laughs> well, that's interesting information. Good luck with that, unless you can promise him wealth untold. He is not going to give up that dance. And how do you know him? What is your association with him? Are you a competitor? You could say that. Rival, perhaps? Well, in that case, perhaps you'd be interested in joining us in uh, embarrassing him. Enough so that he would leave. The Viscount couldn't possibly take him to dance. Well, Maybe if you got a really good deal on some homemade Pepsi. That would shame him. I don't think embarrassing anyone here is a good idea. Perhaps this is your yes. first ball. No, but I saw that uh, little incident earlier with the rope and the hideous blood. It uh, was rather frightening. Perhaps, uh, yes, I could help you though. Him not dancing would benefit me as well. Here's what you need to do. You need to give him promises of money. It's the only thing that will make him move on from the dance. Yes. Anything else and he will insist that the dance is his. An excellent idea. Uh, perhaps I will approach him with a, a business proposition. Yes, Excuse bribe me. him. Thank you, you've been most helpful. Okay. Um. <laughs> I liked him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that guy was cool. That guy was cool. Um. So go, go tell him give, that you will give him money. Yes. Uh, treasures on toad, yes. Um, they're all talking, and he says another joke, and they all laugh. <laughs> <laughs> um, he'll uh, he'll uh, step up and uh, try to like wedge his way in, into the conversation. Um, uh, apologies for interrupting. Uh, uh, no, I don't need apologies. anything else to drink. Oh no! <laughs> but could you take my empty? I'm sorry, sir, you've quite mistaken me. Pardon? Uh, I've come with a proposition for you, and it is a rather private one. Uh, it is a business proposition. If you could take a moment from your adoring fans, I'd like to speak with you. I think it could be rather lucrative. A business proposition. A business proposition. From you. <laughs> oh, yes. I know I don't look the part, but uh, it can be surprising when you open your mind to those that uh, are, to, are not your usual... Uh, business partners. What is your proposition, sir? I'm sorry, it will need to be quite private. We'll just oh, need to step aside. All right, all right. Uh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, I must speak to this rat. <laughs> yes, sir? Well, as you know, I uh, <laughs> am a rat and uh, rather <laughs> incapable of... Um, I just do not have the, uh, the, the physical prowess necessary to collect uh, the treasure that we uh, recently came across, um, my companions and I. Treasure? Uh, yes, we are explorers and uh, have unearthed rather, rather large treasure in the caravanserai. Are you familiar with the caravanserai of Sheboygan? Sheboygan. <laughs> The Sheboygan Caravanserai, no, no. A treasure, what kind of treasure? You've not heard of this. It is rather famous, my good man. No, uh, no, I must, oh. I must admit I'm not familiar with the Sheboygan Caravanserai. It is a caravanserai that was rumored to have uh, excessive amounts of gold in the, in the 14 billion gold piece range, <laughs> uh, but was billion. suddenly uh, taken by a horrific sandstorm and was buried for a thousand years. And you and your friends are explorers that are 
uncovered this treasure? I have seen it with my own eyes. Yes, he is the strongest we could find, and yet he is not strong enough. We could not carry it away. There was too much gold. There was too much. What is your proposition, young man? My proposition is that you uh, use your contacts and and, and, um, abilities to unearth this incredible treasure, uh, draw it out, and uh, I simply am asking for a finder's fee. A ten percent. A ten percent. It will be enough so that I will never work another day in my life. You want me to fund your expedition? No, no. I, I, um, yes. No. Wait. Oh, pick no. one, man. No, pick the one. expedition has already occurred. I simply need the manpower to haul it out. So you're saying this treasure has been found? The treasure has already been found, but it, as he said, it was too much for us to even draw out. I'm simply looking for a helping hand to get it out. I need your manpower, and you can keep most of it. I don't need it. Ten percent of it would mean uh, for generations my family would be fine. Fourteen billion gold pieces, man. He starts licking his lips. The only problem problem homemade Pepsi that could buy. <laughs> You're still here. The only <laughs> pop- <laughs> Give me a deception roll with a plus four for talking to one of his rivals. Okay, all right, all right, great. Uh, come on, O'Brien, come on. dope. Come on! Come on, Fritz, go, go, go! Work it! Come on! Come on! God! Possible. It's don't a forget, don't forget, you have, you have a, a hero. Have oh, a hero. yeah, I've got two. I've got two. Yeah. But I think you can only do one roll. Uh, anyway, you it's can. a 25. Well, I think I'm going to stay with it. Stay? The other one was a 23. You want to hit me or stay? Uh, Come on, Joe. Uh, you always stay on 25. Uh, I don't know if I could roll. <laughs> you always stay on 25. That's always what they, stay, always 25. stay in Vegas. I'll say 25. Pass. Yeah! <laughs> I could have easily rolled lower than that, so. Um, uh, yes, yes. What's the catch? There. The catch is that there, there is no time, and it is quite urgent. Uh, I would need you to leave and gather your men now. Uh, my associate here will accompany you, at least uh, to show you where it is, at least to start. <laughs> and, uh, I will? He will accompany you to the bus station, and then <laughs> you will be on your own. I was to dance the sunset waltz, but 14 billion gold pieces. <laughs> All right, I'll gather my men immediately. And uh, <laughs> I'm glad we picked a believable sum. I think that really pushed it yeah, over the line. I really nailed well, it. I needed a believable sum that 10% of would allow somebody to be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah do sure. whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. 1.4 1. Uh, 1. 4 billion, billion gold? Yeah, yeah. you live pretty well. Generations. Yeah, assuming uh, you don't live too long. <laughs> He is, he is going about gathering his men, so you've created enough of a distraction that uh, he's not going to cause a scene. There okay. may be problems later that you need to deal with, but right now you just need to find this other person and get this ring. One more. It's so fast. It's just One a more. commoner. Modette. Um, yeah, commoner might be harder to find in this ball of thousands of people. You don't even have a last name to go on. Can Atticus... Uh, are, uh, Atticus would like to talk to one of the servants. Okay. The ones that are sort of just, you know, the, the ones who are like cleaning up. <laughs> you can all uh, speak to the servants. Uh, so you see uh, uh, one of them is serving cucumber sandwiches, walking around with a plate. Cucumber sandwich, cucumber sandwich. Would you like a cucumber sandwich? What about you? Cucumber uh, sandwich. Get my blood sugar up. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Atticus will say, uh, yes, that looks quite delicious. Thank cucumber you. sandwich. I'm looking for an attendee of the party, and he pulls out. A gold piece. A gun. And he's like, he pulls out a gun. <laughs> please, please. He pulls out a gold piece, which, for the record, in two is a lot. It's a lot of money. And he, like, swaps a cucumber sandwich with it. And he's like, it would be most helpful if you could tell me the location of Modette. Every roll a diplomacy <laughs> check. <laughs> 16? 14. 20. 16. DC 20. Oh! That was a natty 19. Frisco wow. Joe! Frisco Joe! Joe. Joe! And a gold piece! Joe. And a natty 19! And a gold piece! Woo! I actually have to deduct that gold piece. So you ask, do you say her name? Do you say Modette? Yeah. As you slide the gold piece on? We are looking so for Modette. You take a cucumber sandwich, you slide the gold piece on, and you say the name, and he just starts shaking. 
with his hand. He's like, what is wrong? Baudette, you say? Yes. Um, she was standing uh, over there last time I saw her when a loop of something oh, no. pulled her up. Oh, shit. Please. May I go? Yes, of course. Uh, Thank you. Please be quite silent. Cucumber sandwich. Cucumber sandwich. <laughs> Atticus slowly looks up toward the ceiling where he saw those motions before. Oh, shit. Well, surely she can't dance with them now. <laughs> Perhaps our problem has been taken yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah, Bob's your uncle. Uh, like, we, we're done. Let's go to the pub, throw back a few points. Well, are we? Are we? Are we? Everybody roll a perception check. <laughs> like, like, would it stand to reason that like, once you get pulled up, you're fucking done? Well, maybe, yeah. Oh, dude, 30. Ooh! That's two Natty 19s in a row. Wow. There you go. Wow. Red hot. Red hot for his coach out. What about Xantar? The best Joe that there is. Strut. Yeah. Can't, always approaching Frisco Joe, but can never quite reach him. Yeah. What did uh, Xantar get for perception? Uh, I rolled a natural one. <laughs> Xantar is struggling over there. Uh, <laughs> I'm really... just eating like three cucumber sandwiches. <laughs> Shaking, I'm pale. The, the the natural perspiration on my biceps has gone dry. No. 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 I can hardly recognize him. <laughs> what about you guys? What'd you roll? Twenty-eight. Uh, Twenty-two. Okay. So Halster and Atticus, uh, you kind of look over in the direction of where uh, the the servant pointed yeah. to, and you see. Um, there is a a curtain on the wall that is kind of uh, pulled back a little bit, and there is a ladder leading up. Oh. Into the the catwalk. Maybe Modet was taken up there and blood fell, but if for any reason she wasn't killed or, or who knows what's going on up there, if the Viscount goes to the sunset waltz and she's like, what about me? You know it would be a big embarrassment, so. Uh, and Atticus is actually quite curious about what's going on up there. And an excellent climber. You first. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, yeah. Fuck you, Grant. He is. <laughs> He's a pretty good scurrier. Uh, he will slip up that way. Hasta, follow me. Okay, all right. I'll do. Right. Would you like a distraction? No, no. I, I do, no one will pay attention to us. Even mentioning it would be so rude that they would never do it. Oh, you're right. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I, I can uh, come. No, I'm okay. Uh, you Here, look rather me, weak. No, stand back. You look let rather me, weak. Let me yeah. lead the way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm strong. I can do it. Uh, all right so you guys go up the ladder yeah he'll start going up the ladder okay and and yeah you're right like people standing nearby like you can see their heads are purposefully not looking at you as you ascend this ladder uh it's this narrow ladder affixed to the wall partially concealed behind this tapestry no one's watching you start climbing you go about 60 feet or so. 60 feet? Yeah, you're a going A vertical wow. ladder, straight up. vertical ladder, wow. straight up. And you see that the patchwork up here that was obscuring the ceiling is made of like a dark, thick webbing. Oh. Um, but there are, there are holes in the webbing uh, that you can move through. And in fact, the ladder shoots up through one of those holes. So you can climb through an open portion uh, of the uh, webbing and you see that the ladder ends in a catwalk. So if you continue to uh, ascend the ladder, you get up to the catwalk and it's only about five feet wide uh, for the most part. The, the sort of part where you all step onto it is like a 10 foot square, but then it's very, very thin. 
And sure enough, even though it's dark up here, you see a beautiful young woman about midway down the catwalk, just covered in a thick layer of webbing. She appears to be breathing, though, albeit labored. Let's go to the map. Holy shit. Look directly to your south. Right. Shaboink. Oh, Oh. whoa. Oh, that's so cool. So it is a, yeah, it's a catwalk. Oh, my God. You see the catwalk. It's very, very thin. There are webs everywhere. And in fact, even though the map doesn't show it, like there, there are web pieces on the, like draped over the catwalk as well. And she is covered in it. But you do see, like she's still alive. Atticus will approach. Okay. Atticus starts walking up. Does everyone follow? And yep. what order do they follow? I, I want to put my hand on Atticus and say, Wait, friend. There is a great spider here. Do not walk into its trap. He looks around. I didn't see a spider. It's scent. I think I detect it. Wait, no, that's that's something else. That's <laughs> okay. Go ahead. <laughs> can, can I, still... I can I roll a perception check yeah, for I mean, out in the web? Can I do that? Yeah, absolutely. When he says there's a spider, he, he'll look around. Uh, that's twenty one. Yeah, I'm, I got a not twenty four. Look around. It's very dark. Who has dark vision? I do. Dwarfs do. Okay. So Atticus, possibly Xantar, can see in the dark here. By the way, in 2E Red Folk, do not just have dark vision. You have to take an ancestry feat to do it. You have to be like a below ground Nerd. Dark vision, I have Nerd. it. Oh. It's on the sheet, dark right. vision, I see it. Nerd. So you nerds can see normally up here and you look around, there's fucking webs everywhere. You're looking for movement, and you don't see any spiders. You are a fool, King. (laughs) I am cautious. (laughs) (laughs) Once bitten, twice shy. (laughs) Nice. It works on a lot of levels. (laughs) Thank you, San Francisco. Thank you. Uh, Atticus will move slowly toward her. My dear, are you quite okay? Can you speak? He gets to 15 feet away. Does anybody join up with him, or do you just let him go by himself? Uh, Aldo, I'll join him. I'll join him. Yeah, okay. Aldo will be behind Xantar. Okay. And then Halster, are you right on Aldo's tail, or are you staying back a little? Halster is looking over the edge at the spider webs and does a quick knowledge nature on them. He rolls a 27. Anything from recalling knowledge there? Those are spider webs. You nailed it, dude. But like, we're walking in the spider webs. <laughs> They're giant. They're Leave a message and I'll pull good. you back. I'll call you back. <laughs> There's so many webs, like it would have to be a, uh, a pretty large spider or multiple spiders that would have made a web like this. But you all start walking. And on you get the catwalk. Close. You go walking on the catwalk. On the catwalk. Take yeah. a little catwalk. turn. Yeah. yeah. Take yeah. a little turn. On the catwalk. On the catwalk. And you see her just like, (laughs) the web moving up and down. And as you start walking along the catwalk, you're brushing up against these uh, webs that are just over the edge of the railings here. And suddenly there is movement from all around you. Oh God. As. I don't know, man. They're everywhere, man. (laughs) Two things happen. Right. It's reading right, but you're not reading it right. <laughs> right in front of Atticus from the sky, a giant spider. Oh, oh God! Oh, no. no! Right behind Halster, a second giant spider oh, drops. No! Down. And then all of a sudden, you see these creatures just scurry all the way up to the edge of the catwalk, and there are one, two. Three, oh, no. four of them. What? And they look like this. 
Oh, oh Edder Cat! Oh, I know what that is! Edder Roll Cat. for initiative! Oh, shit! I didn't think it was gonna be any initiative tonight. Come wow. on! Wow, okay. Damn. They just zip right up there. And it's interesting. They have this uh, ability called Spring Upon Prey. Oh, no. I know that ability. If you touch the web at all, they get to move up to you before initiative is rolled. Wow. Yeah. Uh, It's an ability of uh, the giant spider. So, like, it can be adapted to a few different things. But, like, before initiative is rolled, they get a move, which is so cool. So they just... Uh, they get a stride action. Xantar of the Zoogs, your first initiative roll. What'd you get? Uh, uh, let me. It's just that your out. perception check. I know. Yeah. Uh, I got well, a. Hi, 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 I hi. got a twenty-one. No, okay. Nice. Atticus Graham. Twenty-three. Twenty-three for Graham. Aldo. Uh, fifteen for Aldo. Oh 15. no, Aldo, no. Halster. With the bonus, thanks to Battlefield. Battlefield Surveyor, I get a 32. 32! 32! Halster, you go first. There are six creatures. All right, Halster is going to strike out at the venomous-looking spider uh, right in front of him. Um, It's just hanging there on, like, a string web going all the way to the top. Can I strike the the web it's on? Sure, dude. Slice it off? Yeah, you want to try and just uh, strike at the web? Yeah, here it comes. Absolutely. Uh, 23 to hit. 23 to hit the web. That's a good roll. That's a good roll that I'm going to stall for. That is a hit. Nice. Yes. Nice, dude. Nice. Am I rolling damage against it? You are. I have the hardness and the hit points of the wow. web. Wow. Um, 13 points of damage to the web. Slashing. Two things happen. You slice the string above it, it yeah. falls to the ground and takes damage, and you get a bottle cap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, nicely done. Bird dog. Bird dog's in the house. Bird dog. Let's Bird roll that dog. second attack. Good man. Uh, yeah, it takes nine points of damage as it <laughs> hits the floor. Damn. Nice. Uh, 21 to hit on the second attack. All right, so now as it's laying there, you strike it. 21 hits as well. What? Yeah. Um, that will be for 10 points of slashing damage. Okay, 10 points of slashing damage. Do you have any actions left? Uh, yeah, I'm going to take a third attack. I'm going to ride with it. All right, dude. I'm gonna raise this shield. Shields are for losers. That is a 27 to hit. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That is mathematically impossible. It's impossible. Is that a crit? Wait, but you've got a minus 10 to this attack. I rolled a 16. But how did you get a 27 on your third attack? Yeah, my third attack is a plus 11. That is insanity. That's a hit? There's no way that's correct. Your first attack is plus 21? Plus 19, Holy plus 15, shit. plus 11. Oh, because the agile. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, that is wow. a hit. Wow. Uh, is 27 a crit, though? Is 27 and no. crit? No. Okay. Uh, then that will do 13 points of damage to it. My God. Holy so nice. you shit, slice it out of the ass. air. Nicely done. It falls, takes a bunch of damage, and then you just. Gah, gah. But now it's spider turn. No. Spider oh, turn. No, that's spider too turn. soon. No. Let's start with these uh, lurkers. You see that uh, the artwork doesn't show that all of these creatures have like a third a- uh, arm that is just dangling dead from their chest. Uh, uh. But they are going to start attacking. Oh, God. Okay, so the one that is just to the north of Xantar will not go, but the other three will. And the first thing they're going to do is try and trap you all in a web. So, let's try the web trap. Um, I'm going to aim at Aldo with the first one, and then Halster with the second one, and then Xantar with the third one. But I'll just do one dude at a time. So the first one uh, goes after Xantar, and that is a 31 to hit. Ooh. Uh, are we looking at my AC here? Yeah. yeah. That's a hit. That's a hit. Not a crit. Yeah. Hit, not a crit. Well, the good news is you don't take any damage, but you are immobilized. 
Oh, that's bad. So uh, he hits you, you're immobilized, and you're stuck to that surface until you take an action to try and escape. And I have the DC for that escape. Uh, immobilized condition, you can't use any action with the move trait. If you're immobilized by something holding you in place, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, so pretty much you can't move until you try to escape. But you could stay there and just continue to attack. But now that it's immobilized you, it is going to try and bite you with its fangs. First attack, probably a miss, uh, which is going to be a 15. Miss, right? Miss. Okay, and then very low chance to uh, hit on the last attack. Misses. Second one tries to do the same thing to Aldo. First with the web is a 29. That's a hit. All right, so Aldo is stuck in place, immobilized, and Ah! then a miss and a miss on the two attacks. And then the third one will uh, try to, the one right to the south of Aldo will try to do the same thing to Halster. First to immobilize you, a 30. Oof. Oof. Does that count as a melee hit? Uh, yes. I will use my reaction to raise my shield, and I will still be hit. Okay. All right, so it it hits you, but your shield is up. However, you are immobilized, and then it misses on its two attacks. So uh, it kind of accomplished its main goal, which was to stick all three of you in place. And now it is Atticus's turn. You see all your buddies are covered in webs, not unlike this poor woman. Oh, no. This is quite... Um, okay. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Atticus. So, wait. There was one across the one that you cut down, Grant. That fell? It's gone? Nope. He's still attacking yes. it. It just took damage from the fall. It's the one right behind Oh, it's it. right there on the edge. Okay. Um, yeah, you've got a giant spider in front of you, and then just behind you, flanking Xantar of the Zoogs, is two more of these web lurkers. Uh, okay. Um, Atticus is going to begin casting a spell. Uh, does that provoke? Uh, it does not. Okay. So he will com- uh, complete a, an incantation, and then uh, behind the creature uh, that is in combat, that is directly next to Xantar of the Zoogs, on the web, okay. will appear uh, a duplicate of itself. Right behind it. Behind it? like Behind it. Right there? Yeah. Okay. On this web. Uh, it will... Uh, yeah. It, it, it appears on the web, and then it attacks. So, it, wow. okay. What? It appears on the web, and then it attacks... Yeah. How does that work? Uh, it, the, the creature... Your creature feels the weight, senses the presence, smells the whatever, the nastiness. As it starts to turn, this thing attacks it with a flanking bonus because it's flanking with uh, King Xantar. Xantar. Okay. <laughs> uh, and we'll attack. Uh, that is a 24 to hit. All right, so that's a hit. Yeah. What does this imaginary creature do for damage? Uh, it does seven points of damage. Is it mental damage? Mental damage. Okay, that's really cool. Seven points of mental wow. damage. All right, cool. so it, it thinks it's real, and it takes mental damage from that. Okay. Very cool. It is a spell called Illusory Creature. Uh, and you can, like, make rolls to disbelieve the creature if it is... Um, like, if it does damage that doesn't make any sense, or, you know, like the way it describes in the spells, like, if it's like a large dragon and it does seven points of damage or something, the, oh, the creature can get a save. Okay. Uh, but otherwise, you have to, like, hit the creature for it to vanish, basically. Interesting. Okay. All right. Is that uh, the full complement uh, of your actions? No. Uh, it will attack one more time, because I can give it two attacks with one of my actions. Two actions to cast it. One of my actions gives it two attacks, but it does take the multiple attack penalty. All right, buddy. But I rolled really well and got a uh, 28 on the second attack. That is uh, that is a hit. Nice. So it's just slicing at this thing uh, and does another five points of mental damage. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, okay. so it's just like, uh, come, my friends, take them down. Okay, so you went after that guy. Unfortunately, the giant spider hanging in front of you, it's his turn. Oh, and he is just going to try and bite you. So rather than spray you with a web, he reaches out with his fangs 
And that is going to be a 26 to hit. That is a hit. A couple things are going to happen. First, Shit. you're going to take 12 points of damage. Then I need a fortitude save. Fortitude save. From its spider oh, venom. Oh, no. 18. DC 19. Oh, oh no. no. Wait. Shit, I should have just What a bummer. You only take one point of poison damage, but you are flat footed for one round. And that round starts now as it goes to do a second attack with its fangs. That's a 23. Uh, that is, I guess, a hit. I, I don't have flat foot on yet. Is it just minus two to AC? Yeah. If so, then that is a hit. Okay, 23. Uh, yes, that confirmed. is going that to is be uh, nine points of damage. Now, uh, let me ask my friends in the audience here, unless one of you guys knows. Uh, do they roll the save again against the poison, and then it would go to stage two, or he's already been infected, and it just keeps johnning? Roll again. No one knows. I think I think you do roll it again. It just keeps going. Okay, so give me another fortitude save. Uh, got it. Okay, so you're fine, but you still remain at stage one. Yes. Uh, all right, and then final attack misses. And now, it is. Fuck! It's still my turn. I hate having oh, no. all these creatures. <laughs> all right, it's the last one of these Johns, and he is going to try and immobilize you to start. Uh, with Atticus. one of these, yeah. When you yeah. say you, you mean yeah, with Atticus. One of these uh, web trap John skis, and it's going to be a oh, 15 to hit. Miss, miss. Yes. Okay. Great. Then he'll just try and bite you with a fang, miss, and then with a claw, miss. So wasted turn for that guy, and then it goes to the other fucking spider. I'm sweating! He's gonna attack Halster. He's so mad because Halster knocked him off of his sweet, sweet web. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to try and bite and poison you. So here comes the fangs. Natural one. Oh, yeah! Yes! Oh. <laughs> yes. Unbelievable. Okay, actually very believable. It was Grant. And now it's going to be just a regular old uh, attack here again. Miss with a nat three, and then uh, miss again. So, Coward and awesome. fear, spider! <laughs> just like keeps clanking off your armor. Bang, 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 bang. Bang. Xantar of the Zoogs. Ah, yeah, yeah, I want to see this dude unleashed! For my first action, I rage! Yes! yes! <laughs> Boosting my stats and damage. For my second action, I raise my enormous great club <laughs> and I smash the disgusting arachnid directly south of me. No, the one north of you because you well, get a flanking bonus for that. Oh, okay. Well, I kind of really had my heart set on the one to the oh, south. All right, you do you. <laughs> no, let's take the flanking bonus. Okay. And fight the one to the north. Okay, here we go. The one in the north! you <laughs> to that's going to be a 30 altogether. Yeah! Oh, with the flanking, yeah. plus two for flanking. Oh, 32 with critical the flanking. Hit. Critical hit! Oh. Critical threat, critical threat, critical threat. Roll damage twice. Okay, here we go. Damage. Crit! With damage, I just rolled 12, 24 damage altogether. Oh, 24 oh, points No, wait, damage. more than that. 20, I'm sorry. More, I'm uh, 28, 28. 28 points of damage. So, And what are you using for a weapon? A great club. club. So you just fucking... Boom! Boom. Boy, got, uh, all right. Boy, you have one action left. And for my last action, I rip the webs apart that are holding me to the ground. All right, give me an escape check. And that is uh, uh, what kind of a check? I think it's athletics. Athletics, here we go. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, an enormous 14 plus 17. I don't know. Yeah, 31. 31. 31. 31. 31, yeah. you're out. Yeah! Yeah! Good round. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Good round. Ah! Ah! Uh, okay, great. So you are out and you've done massive damage to this guy. Let's finish out the round with Aldo. Aldo, you're immobilized, but uh, what do you want to do here? All right, Aldo is pinned, uh, uh, pasted to this catwalk, but he still has a hand free. And uh, with his free hand, he plucks a vial of alchemist's fire from his bandolier. And he says, taste fire at a cop, 
Boom! Uh, that is a 25 to hit. 25 is a hit. Is this the one directly to the north? The one that the one that Xantar just hit. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah, yeah that's a hit. Nice. Okay. Kill it! Uh, okay, that is 10 points of fire damage. Woo! And, and I'm going to do... Um, that, this is going to hurt Xantar as, and me and Atticus as well, but I'm going to do the two points of splash damage okay, because so I, wanted, I wanted to the web to catch fire. Ah. So there's no save for that. We just take two fire. Just two points of fire. And uh, the that creature is on fire also. All right. So everyone around you takes two points? Yeah. All right. So Halster, all of these Ettercaps, uh, and Xantar. Yeah. And, and Atticus. And Atticus as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, or no, just around the guy. So not Halster, but everybody else. Okay. Right. right. Great. Uh, okay. All right. Good round. Well, I, I have two more bombs. Keep going. So we'll do uh, do another one. Oh, yes, that is a 25 again to hit. Another hit. Oh, uh, that is 11 more points of fire damage. And that zoo, uh, that enter cap is dead. That's, yeah! Is that yeah! Zoo? Nice, dude. One down. One down. You got one action left, buddy. I do, and I'm going to throw a third bomb at the one to my north. Okay, this is the one with the minus 10. Okay, that is that is a seventeen to hit. That one misses. Okay. No splash or anything for a miss. Uh, I don't think so. Okay, I'm not too stressed about it. Yeah. Uh, but, 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 round two. Good round, everybody. Good, good round. round. Hey, everybody, good round. Solid round. We got one down already. Come on. I didn't start sweating until we started combat, and now I'm soaked. Halster, you're up, good buddy. You're stuck to this fucking catwalk. Stuck in place, and I gotta finish up this spider. Let's squash it with a 32 to hit. Let's nice. squash that bug. That is a uh, critical hit. Yes! Yeah! Critical threat, critical threat, critical, critical, critical threat. 28 points of oh, damage. Oh, yeah. yeah! 28, buddy! Splat! That thing's dead. Yeah! yeah! Halster! Uh, I see my best friend threatened on both sides. I will attack the one that he attacked in the north that Xantar can the also reach. The one to the north! Uh, that is going to be a 28 to hit. Yes. That is a hit as well. For 14 points of damage. Nice. 14 points of damage. Okay, final attack. Uh, I'm going to raise my shield. Or raise your shield. My shield final listen. action. All right, All so right. the shield goes up for a little AC boost, John. And it is time for the nightmare web lurkers. Uh, Xantar the Zoogs is no longer immobilized. Aldo and Halster are, but they're just going to start chomping away. First, the one to the north of Aldo is going to try to get its fangs on you. First attack, natural 20. Oh, no! Critical threat, critical threat, critical, critical, critical threat. 20 points of piercing damage. Oh. And give me a fortitude save. Fortitude save. Oh, dear. Oh, 17. Oh, no. Yikes. All right, you take two points of poison damage, and you're flat-footed. And uh, here comes another attack here. Uh, that is going to be a, a 20 against flat-footed. Uh, flat footed. That is a miss. That's a miss. Okay. So this last one is a miss as well. Yes. And now the one to the south of you goes after Halster first with its fangs. Uh, that is going to be a 21 to hit. Miss. Because of the yes. shield? Yes. No. Yes. But, yeah, Just say yes. Just cool. say it is. Kong it. Kling. Tries to bite and you bite your shield. It's like, ah, that tastes terrible. <laughs> and then a gnat to... And uh, a miss as well. Yes. And then yes. The, the final uh, living nightmare web lurker will go after Xantar of the Zoo. Ah, ah. Bring it. All right. It's going to go fangs to start 29. 29 is a hit. Okay. You're going to take oh low damage, uh, nine points of piercing, and then give me a fortitude save. Uh, okay. Nine points piercing. Okay. Fortitude save. Oh no. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's slow down. Slow down. 
So my fortitude save is uh, nope. right now it's just a plus 13, so 16 altogether. 16 oh. altogether because of the drained four. Yeah. That is a fail. He, ah! wouldn't, he wouldn't have failed if he wasn't drained. Yep. Four. You take five points of poison, Ooh. and uh, you oh. are also flat-footed. Uh, and then it's going to go after you with its claws. Here comes the claw. Here comes the oh. claw. I rolled a d12. That's so silly. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, oh, nap two. And then uh, final attack. I'll do another claw here. Another miss. So, please Woo. tell me I'm done. Yes, it's Atticus's turn. Does anything happen with poison? That he was poisoned last round? Yeah, still I need flat-footed? another fortitude save. You're, you're still flat. Well... Yeah. Do I start with this, the save or is it the end of the, the round? The duration is 10 rounds, so we'll say you start the round uh, by making a save. If you pass, uh, you're fine. If not, fortitude, you go to stage two. Uh, he, I think that's a f- another fail, I think. Oh, come on, Atticus, you, ba- you beautiful bastard. Wait, 18. Fail. Uh, that's right, it was 19, wasn't it? God damn it. You take two points of poison. You're fat, flat, fat-footed. Yeah, you're fat, <laughs> fat-footed. <laughs> hey. Fat-footed. It's not cool. And you're slowed one. Oh, no, that geez. just changed the entire goddamn Whoa. round. No. You need oh. that. Yeah, slowed one. You have one less action, which shouldn't be bad for a caster. <laughs> well, good for you. You made the show drag for the next eight minutes trying to figure out what the fuck to do because I had my turn already and now I can't do it. Uh, <laughs> Try to wake up. <laughs> wake up. Uh, no. I mean, all they need, my all three actions. Yeah. Uh, yes, you do need all three actions to wake oh, up. For shit's sake. Yeah, you want to delay Dummy. so bad. I can uh, smell it on you. God, this sucks. Uh, uh, all right, because of the slowed condition, he is going to go defensive. Okay. And uh, he will cast Mirror Image. Mirror oh, Image. So, nice. so he suddenly feels like he's getting sick and that he's vulnerable and weakened, and he's just like, does, you know, one of his incantations that he could do almost for a show, you know, and then like, boom, three of him come out. Um, you see four of him, but three replicas come out beside him. Okay. Now uh, it's his turn. That's all he can do. Let's get those guys on there. Pshoo, pshoo, pshoo. Oh, nice. Nice. There cool. There you go. That's a lot of Atticus's. A lot of Atticai. Um, all right. It is my spider's turn. One of my spiders is dead. Uh, that was Spider Rico. And now the other spider is the one that is in front of Atticus. Uh, it is going to attempt to bite you. Actually, let's try to trap you first. Make it harder. Because if you have a uh, spell that has the move trait, you won't be able to do it if you're immobilized. Uh, I don't know if you have a spell like that, but uh, I'm still going to do it. So here comes a little uh, little web. Here we go. 28. Uh, that is a hit. So now roll a d4, and uh, you hit me on a 1. I hit you on a 1. I rolled a two. So you destroy an image. Nice. Okay. Destroy an image. Let me take him off the board. And I am not immobilized. Yes. Take him off the board. He took him off the board. Okay, great. So now I am going to try to do it again. Uh, this is a 20. Uh, that is a miss, and you destroy an image. Okay. And then just for shits and gigs, I'll do it one more time. Uh, and I missed. So well, just what'd you get? Choo, choo, choo. Oh. I got a... You have to critically fail to not destroy an image. 18. Wow. So you destroy okay. the other image. Wow. Okay. Wow. All right. With so a wow, mirror 10. image is way worse now. With a... Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's very nice. That's very kind. You flew across the country. <laughs> you know what? That. I get that a lot. Uh, it is Xantar of the Zoog's turn. Ah! Okay. Ah! Um, uh, let's see. I'm... Raging for nine. Uh, this is uh, give me a fortitude save. To a start. fortitude save. Am I okay? Uh, that time way better. Sixteen plus my fortitude save uh, thingy is. Um, sorry, my fortitude save is right now currently plus thirteen. Thirteen plus twenty nine. Twenty nine. You're fine. Okay. 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 I'm yes. back to normal. No yes. longer flat footed. Okay. First action. Smash a uh, enter cap. 
Uh, yeah, that one. The one to the north of... The one to the, the north. One to the, north. north. Oh. the one to the north. Ah, that is a... Uh, that is a uh, 27. That is a hit. Yeah, nice. There you go, dude. Come on. All Get right. Rah. That is... Uh, 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 17. 17 points of damage. All right, big nice. hit with your club, just smashing this dude. Hey, what happened with your uh, your mirror image there? You just have to direct, oh, not your mirror image, your illusion. You have to di- direct it with an action. I have to, yeah, that slowed. Fucked you up. Ah! <laughs> you ruined everything. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, you got two more actions, buddy. Well, uh, just because. So it's just sitting there. Just because I have this ability. <laughs> it's like it's on the fighter select screen. It's like, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do another attack against the same Edder Cap. Okay. Negative four, right? Uh, um, you have an uh, agile weapon? No, negative five. Negative five. Okay, here oh, we go. Only negative four if you move. Ah, that's uh, all together, that is a 20, uh, sorry, 26 minus 5, 21. That is a hit. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Very low AC. Keep that damage coming. All right. That time I rolled. This poor woman. This poor woman. <laughs> yeah. That time I only rolled nine damage. Aha. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> One more attack. Very low chance to hit, but you might as well try. Might as well. I don't know where I would move. Yeah, here we go. Ah, the great club comes back around and he smashes. Smashes it into you! Uh, or maybe he doesn't because he only rolled a. Uh, t- uh, this is a 22. Actually, that seems like a hit. It's a tw- yeah, 22. Right? That's a hit. 22 is a hit. Yeah! yeah. Wait, 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 wait. It's minus 10. Minus 10 is a 12! Oh. Not a hit. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's not that's a miss! <laughs> Swing and a miss for Xantar of the Zoogs in his second at bat. <laughs> Finish off the round with Aldo. Come on, Aldo. All right, Aldo, uh, with his first attack, uh, he's going to smash another bottle of Alchemist Fire on the one to the north. The one to the north. The one to the north. Uh, that is a 23 to hit. 23 is a hit. Uh, that is nine points of fire damage. Okay. It is on fire. Okay. I will forego splash damage as it will not benefit us. Great. Uh, second attack is a 28. Oh, 28 is a hit as well. Uh, that is 12 points of fire damage. And he did. Yeah! yeah! Burn him out! Burn him out! Burn, you bastards! Burn, you bastards! And with his final action, he is going to try to aid Xantar in his next attack. Nice! He is going to throw hit one arm around uh, his neck. And with his other hand, he's going to pass a uh, little vial of, of homemade Pepsi under his nose. Give him that extra boost that he needs to su- succeed. I'm going to do an alch- alchemical lore check to aid another. Very that, cool. Okay. okay? Uh, that is a 24. So that should succeed. That yeah. should succeed, which will give him a plus two plus to hit. Plus two. Okay. Under attack. Under attack. Great. Oh, now give me a fortitude great. save, because I think you were poisoned yes. by the uh, web lurker as well. Uh, uh, that is a 22. That is a pass. 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 Yes. All okay. right. Awesome. So you're good. Cool. Great. Great. New round. Halster's turn. Halster's going to swing against the southern cap. Here comes the first southern attack. Southern cap. There's a better. 21 to hit. 21 to hit is a hit. Oh, nice. Yeah, baby. Uh, that will be for 12 points of damage. Okay. Uh, great. First time it was hit. Uh, the second attack is a 32, which should crit. Critical. Yeah. There we go, baby. Critical crit. Critical crit. Critical crit. Critical crit. Critical crit. 30 points of damage. Woo! 30 yeah. points of damage. A slam. Kaboom sauce. All what? right. Final attack. If, what do you, or do you want to raise your shield? I want to ask San Francisco what I think I should do. Should I third third time? Third time? B. Aggression. Sounds like raise B. shield B. to Aggression. me. Oh, my God. It's oh. a 30. Yes. One. That's a, on the die. That's another critical crit. Red, oh. Critical red, critical red. 
26 points of damage. Yes. And in one round, you kill this yes! guy. That is so preposterous. <laughs> what weapon are you using? It's agile? Uh, yeah, it's agile. It's a short, short sword. <laughs> 30 on your third attack. I rolled wow. a 19, Joe. You when roll you roll 19? well, the numbers go higher. If you would do it once in your dumb life. That's how it works. Good job. Let's go. All right. All right, you've had your turn. You cheating son of a bitch. I got one of these guys left. Uh, were you poisoned at all or no? No, I killed that thing before okay. poison me. <laughs> Are you poisoned all? Grant's like, no. <laughs> he, I'm Grant. <laughs> what, are what are you about? Think? All right, I got one of these lurkers left. He's going to go, and he's going after Xantar the Zooks. Uh, <laughs> First, he's going to start with the fangs. 28 to hit. Hit. Okay. 13 points of damage. Give me a fortitude save. Fortitude save is a 19. That's a fail. Now, ah. where you passed last time, you progressed back, to, and now you start over again, so you'll take two points of poison and you're flat-footed. So minus two to your AC for its claw attack, uh, which is agile, and it fucking missed, and then one more claw uh, missed. So not nice. terrible. And now it is Atticus's turn. Give me a fortitude save. Come on. Pass, and you will remove the slowed condition. Uh, man, just ducking, eking along, like just eking along. <laughs> Auto cap. Twenty-two. That is a pass. Yes. So what does that mean? He that moves means up one. He's not move, slowed. Yeah, you move up one. You'll take two points of poison damage okay. and just be flat-footed, but you're not slowed. All right, two points of damage, flat-footed, but Ooh. not slowed, which not is sneered. huge. Well, actually, not as much anymore. Uh, and that spider in front of you is going to go next. Right. And it's out for rat blood. I should get the fuck out of there then. Um, yeah, I already used, already used my mirror image. Uh, all right, then he will, let's see. Um, he's going to, oh, this is interesting. Do something interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know you have a whole round to think about this, right? <laughs> yeah, but it changed when Halster, in three attacks, just killed an enemy who had full health. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Don't forget, you got I your buddy up here. I was going to do. You got this guy up here, Steve. Uh, yeah, I got Steve. Hey. But <laughs> hey, now what? Steve is so far from what the enemy. What do you want me to do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, uh, hey. yeah, so that's what he'll do. He will move all the way back through all of his allies and out of the way <laughs> of that creature in front of him. He will then take Steve. <laughs> Steve! Yeah. Steve! What? Over there. All right. Where and uh, he will put Steve where he was. Hey, how are you? And uh, <laughs> Steve will uh, attack the uh, big spider in front. Uh, and that is uh, a 21 to hit. That's a hit. Yeah. And he will do six points of mental damage six to points. Uh, nice. Billy in okay. the front there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that's his turn. That's his turn. Good turn. It's the spider's turn. The spider attacks the fucking... Illusion. And, uh, all right, so you tell me what happens here. It's going to try and bite it. Uh, 20 to hit. Uh, miss. It, ooh. He's so Atticus is like, he's concentrating on his eyes are rolling in the back of his head. And he, like, has it dodge out of the way. Natural two. Yes. Uh, and then a natural three. Yeah! So this, this Unbelievable. All you have to do is hit it, and it's destroyed. There's I know. No I, HP I, roll. I had three chances. Uh, it is Xantar the Zoog's turn. There are two enemies uh, left. All right. Uh, Xantar will turn to the Ettercap to his south, and he will uh, raging uh, attack with his great club. Let's uh, see what you got. All right. Ah, that's good. That's a tw uh, 30. 30 is 30, a... 31. What? Huh? You get a plus one to that roll because of the aid. Oh, yeah. that's right. Because of the home Just aid. Just plus one? Plus 31. One. That's a critical, so... Yeah! 
double damage. Critical threat, critical threat, critical, critical, critical threat. Oh, that's good. That's real good. Uh, 36. Yes, Papers. awesome. Oh, my God. 36 Wait, that, points of damage? Uh, yeah, because yeah, I rolled right. I rolled 18 damage times 2 is 36. It yeah, sure yeah. is. All right. Oh, wait. I, I get even more than that. Sorry about that. No. Oh, one second. Uh, it's uh, plus, okay, plus 12. So uh, 36 plus 12. 36 plus 12. All right, so 48 points of damage. Holy 48 shit. points of damage. Okay, second attack. <laughs> okay, uh... I mean, now I'm just going to kind of wait and see what he does. No, uh, <laughs> no I, I'll attack again. Here okay. we go. Negative five. Here we go. So, right. Here we go. All right. That time, just a 20 to hit. That is a uh, miss. Okay. Oh. Um, I think I, I think I, I don't think I should attack. Should I attack again? Yeah. yeah. Go for it. At minus 10, really? Yeah. What the hell else are you going to do? Uh, it got a very good point. <laughs> I, I attack again. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I roll a, that's a three. So, <laughs> okay. uh, no, it's not. What the hell is that? <laughs> that's a 19. So I rolled a nine plus 16. I rolled a 25. Oh actually. yeah. Is that with a minus 10? What's that? Is, is that with the minus 10? Uh, wait, uh, no, for your, it's the minus 10. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm going to go. Thank <laughs> you, guys. <laughs> Check, on Check on Joe while you're back there. It's a new, uh, no, it's uh, end of the round. It's Aldo's turn. Aldo, right, two Aldo. enemies left. All right, going to throw, uh, throw a bomb. Uh, that is a 28 to hit. That is a hit, not a crit. Okay, uh, that is nine points of damage. Uh, it is on fire. I don't think we've done any of the It's uh, just dead. Damage. Is yes! What it is. Awesome. Okay, so and it's cooking on there, and there's one enemy left. All right, with a second attack, he's going to lob one over the heads of Xantar uh. and Illusory Steve. Uh, that is a 21 to hit. <laughs> Over Xantar and Illusionary Steve. Uh, <laughs> a 21. It doesn't take any penalties for uh, throwing into John? Uh, no, I okay. don't think so. Then that is a hit. Uh, okay, that is 15 points of fire damage. Woo! It is also on fire. Okay. And uh, he's going to t uh, take another pass with a homemade Pepsi with the alchemical check for on Steve. Uh, he fails to do so. It All was right. flat. It was that was flat Pepsi. Flat it was, batch of oh, homemade Pepsi. Nothing worse. It was crystal Pepsi. Yeah. Uh, there is one enemy left, and it is Halster's turn. Uh, Hals <laughs> Halster is Anyone going... have any doubts as to what's going to happen? <laughs> 10, 15, 20. Uh, uh, he's still immobilized, though. Oh, uh, so can I make the roll to get yeah, out? You can what make a, acrobatics or athletics, whatever's better. Uh, okay, here comes a plus 13 right at your face with the 25 to nice. get out of that. You are free, my friend. Wait, was it ac acrobatics or athletics? It was athletics. So he rips. <laughs> get that shit out of here. I am Bantar of the Boogs. Uh, here comes Hal <laughs> Search. Straight All up right. with a second action, and we'll swing. All right, second third. action, you move into place, third action, swing. 30 to hit. <laughs> what, what a what charmed life. That is a hit. You don't take a, a penalty on your first attack. It's the first attack, it's true, buddy. It's true. Uh, that's a crit, by the way. Uh, oh. Uh, oh, that's why I was critical stuck. Crit, you critical don't not crit. 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 It's amazing. <laughs> no, that can't be right. Is that right? 12, uh, 24 points of damage. 24 hit points left. Yeah! No question! No question! <laughs> Bergdog! And all of these poor spiders are dead! And you walk over to uh, this poor woman and she's just like... <laughs> Like you see, she's her skin looks purple. Uh, she's clearly been poisoned uh, by these yeah. horrible uh, nightmare spiders and web lurkers. Um, what do you do? I she's say trapped. the Viscount is not going to dance with you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing. <laughs> Are you okay? 
Can you breathe? Are there we- there's not webs in front of her mouth or anything like that? Uh, she's covered, but like you guys can, can pull it all away. There's four of you. You can yeah. uh, free yeah. her. And she's just like, yes, I'm, a- I'm okay. I... I was I was pulled up here. I didn't do anything wrong, and 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 they just attacked me. I don't know what their plans were for me, but I feel very sick. And she vomits. Oh, my dear. I, I'm flat-footed and slowed one. <laughs> oh, it is the worst. I know it. I I'm know so it well. Sorry. Is it the same type of vomit we saw on the Viscount earlier? No, she's just straight up puke. Uh, I'm going to use, I'm going to, uh, Aldo pushes his way to the four, and he is going to use a medicine check to tr- to treat poison. Ooh, okay. Give All me right. that check. All right. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, that is a 32. Oh, baby. I'm going to say that's good enough to get her uh, in good shape. Uh, and uh, she obviously takes the news uh, poorly, but she's thankful that you saved her life. And she's like, I just, this would have been a, a big moment for me. I'm but a, a poor serving girl to dance with the Viscount. It would have been wonderful. And, and perhaps we would have banged as well. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> but I It was a beautiful dream, but it cannot be. Dear. I've always wanted to bang a Viscount. <laughs> there's, there's always another ball, my dear. <laughs> yes, well, I understand. Perhaps next ball. Um, but please don't tell him that I was caught by these spiders. I don't want to embarrass myself in case no, he of course looks not. for me again I, one day. We would never dream of it. It's, besides, it's nothing compared to his explosive diarrhea. Oh, I oh didn't. yes, did you know that, by the way? Well, I did. count rather filled with diary. Well, that, frankly, that makes me want him even more. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let's unpack this. No. <laughs> Let's not. No, I don't want to talk about it. It's, it's getting late. Um, all right, bye. Bye. And she, bye. Slides, she slides down the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> like a Dark fire Soul pole. slide. Dark, <laughs> Dark Souls slide down the Dark ladder. Dark Souls slide down the ladder. See uh, We'll return to the count. Your turn to the Count. Oh, my dear Viscount. Oh, hello. It's so nice to see you again. Oh, uh, it's so lovely to see you. We yes. have the most wonderful news for you. Uh, oh, uh, what news would that be? Uh, it would be the news that none of your engagements are expecting you to dance this evening. Oh, well, truth be told, I already knew that as my functionaries were watching your progress, though you did disappear there for a time you are quite sneaky. <laughs> I hate that. I want to kill this guy. So, Santa, kill him! Okay. Okay, I... <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Wait, I pull my great club. Wait, wait. <laughs> there are like 20 guards. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Guard. I put my it's great club away. Show. Hold on. <laughs> I, I put my club away. <laughs> Well, thank you for saving me from public embarrassment. You have earned your ring. And he snaps his fingers, and a uh, a valet comes over uh, with a cushion. And sure enough, right in the middle of the cushion is the Viscount's signet ring. He says, that's for you. And in fact, I'm so pleased. You may take this as a token of my appreciation as well. And he claps his hands again, and a guy comes over with a uh, another pillow that has this <laughs> belt on it and the belt oh, is come on. glowing with oh, magic. Yes! Oh. yes, that's for you as well and oh, my beloved has arrived and suddenly there's a hush oh, over no. the crowd and all the musicians stop playing their instruments and everyone just stands there and starts to back away from the middle of the floor. And there's just thousands of them moving in unison away, creating this space. And he's like, oh, oh my beloved. And like black tar is coming out of his mouth as he starts drooling in anticipation and slowly walking down the dais past all of you. And he walks rather daintily. And you see everyone is just looking and they start looking up. And as they look up, descending from one single web... Oh, come on! ...is this enormous, gross, bloated purple spider. Oh! 
Oh! And it just comes down and it's just dripping all sorts of fluids, green oh. and black. <laughs> and it lands in the middle of the dance floor. And he's like, my beloved. <laughs> It's just black tar coming out of his mouth. And slowly all the musicians like start playing a song and everyone is just like standing there trying not to be horrified. And he reaches over and he sticks his arms like trying to grasp around this giant bloated purple spider. And they begin to dance. Oh my God. And we'll see you at Gen Con! Oh my God.